Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Yes, yes. We are. Uh, we will be going live in a few minutes. Uh, and uh, remember, we are also live. We are also live in YouTube. Uh, Good morning, everybody. So we. So yes, yes. We are. Uh, we will be going live in a few minutes. Uh, and uh, remember, we are also live. We are also live in YouTube. Good uh, morning, everybody. So we are so yes, yes. we are uh, we'll be going in a few minutes. Uh, and uh, remember we are also live. We are also live in the YouTube. Uh, good morning, everybody. So we are so yes, we are uh, we'll be going in a few minutes. Uh, and uh, remember we are also live. Uh, sorry for that mischief. Uh, uh, there was a itch, there was a itch because they because they also live streaming the same on YouTube, so. Uh, everything is okay. We'll be able to, as I said, we are going to be going live. I want to believe people are, are getting me. We are going to go live exactly at around nine, nine or five. So <clears throat> those who may find that they are they are locked out due to numbers, then they can still join us or rather follow us live in YouTube. So uh, get ready to navigate. Today we are going to do a very important session about the topical mapping. So I'll be able to show you how the octopus technique can work. And the topic of today is uh, I'll be able to navigate rate a few issues about the common blunder, the common mistakes that students make when they when when students are doing the exam. And I'll also be able to uh, try to answer a few questions, just pointing out some of the common mistakes that uh, uh, students can, can make. Then I think it will be very good. Then I'll be able to I'll be able to uh, to delve into an area that students uh, we have found many books have not expounded them very well, and that is the the area of uh, of the organic, possibly uh, the, the 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 preparation of uh, the, the the sulfur we have now uh, the, the the natural rubber, and of course the the content of organization. So we have the natural rubber, we have uh, uh, we have the, the, the terrilene, and we have uh, the nylon 66. So I'll be navigating that. I'll also be taking you through uh, the concept of, uh, I'll also be taking you through the concept of um, the soap manufacture, the soap lead detergent. That's because you're going to find that uh, sometimes in the book you may find uh, 
like preparation of surplus detergent. It has taken it has taken two pages, but I'll show you how to summarize that one in a very uh, easy way. So we'll be so because you are going to find that uh, sometimes in the book you may find uh, of oh, you do it on pages, but I'll show you how to summarize that one. Those teachers who are available again, uh, uh, raise up your hands so that they can make use of cost. Mm -hmm. Those so, are available again. Uh, up uh, that. Uh, 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 I said teachers available, make sure that you give me a high five so that I can uh, I can make your cost. I want to disconnect your yeah, your life. I'm not getting that. Uh, mm -hmm. When I post Twitter, I love him. I did a Zoom. You have a house by.
Ah, no, where are you? I'm not seeing your, your hand. You may say, maybe you are there and you are a teacher, please. Uh, and you know how to operate Zoom. You can uh, raise up your hand so that I can make you a post. It makes it very easy when you raise up your hand because I'm able to see you. Okay, good morning once more and welcome to our today's meeting. I want to believe that everybody is getting me loud and clear. And again, today we are going to continue from where we stopped. Uh, I was only supposed to do one meeting, but due to public remand, uh, that I decided to do another one today. And uh, I'm, I'm going to take you through the area that I think uh, they are a little bit pro uh, problematic. So I'll be able to have a look at that. I'm not able to see my name. Let me share my screen. Uh, so I want to believe that everybody is able to see my screen. Is that right? I'm saying I... Yes, yes. Okay. You're getting my screen and you're also able to... Yes. Okay, good. That's, that's, that's perfect. So in that kind of a scenario, I want to, to start off. Uh, today, I'm going to deal with the. Uh, I'm going to this lot to disable notification uh, uh, annotation so that people can be able to get me. So, uh, welcome to our today's sessions. Of course, the uh, uh, from the Yopa Command Center, and uh, of course, these are again the second session of the National uh, Chemistry Capacity Building for students who are waiting for KCSC. This purely for candidates because. Um, uh, because the, the, the quote that I'm going to unpack or rather illuminate today uh, is a little bit uh, uh, complex. Uh, we are going to do topical mapping using the extended uh, syllabus uh, surgical analysis. So here we are breaking down. Eh? So it's like wherever you pick a topic, you try to do uh, look at the options. What can be tested in this particular topic? So that one is called extended syllabus uh, uh, surgical analysis or rather extended, uh, apart from the normal syllabus that you know, you pick every topic and you see what uh, what is the content, what is the examination content in that. And you do it in such a manner that now you are able to exhaust all the possibilities in which the examiner can think. So today, I'll focus on a very important topic, so that is the topic of rate, topic of organic, uh, and possibly, yeah, it's normally organic and rate. But from there, there are also some area that may we find that uh, the students are getting confused. Here we are dealing about, are you funny? I'm muted, no, I'm not muted. So I was, I, I, I thought I was muted, but of course I, I can see as much. So uh, whatever we, I'm talking about is that uh, I'll be able to, 
uh, to take you through uh, several areas according to the question that people have been talking about. Uh, many students have also requested me to take them through um, the, the, the thoughts. I'll also be able to see by the end of the day, I'll communicate that whether uh, we are going to have a, we are going to have a, 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 a topic on rate or other analysis of rate possibly by tomorrow. So welcome and get ready. If you have any question, please post it in the in the in the in the in the, in the comment sections or in the chat. Uh, remember these these uh, these uh, this video is also live in YouTube. Just in case people because the the Zoom that I have can only accommodate a maximum of one thousand. Uh, so if it goes beyond that, then people can follow up the conversation in YouTube. And um, they can, through the comment section, I can be able to see what they are asking. Here through the chat, please make sure that if you have any question, any anything that you want to say, you can put it there. As I said, I've also, people were asking about for some notes, a uh, clear version that you can be able to print and I put them, I did put uh, a clear content in there via my Twitter because you know, uh, we cannot have students in WhatsApp, so we can only put something that the YouTuber cannot be able to post something like uh, an image there, but I decided to post most of those uh, summarized notes. I was able to put them in my Twitter handle. So when you go there, you'll be able to download, and then you can print and possibly you can use it in school. Thank you. Let's get ready so that we can be able to get. And I think uh, uh, you have also followed the, the recording. Those who missed yesterday, I normally I posted it in my YouTube, I try to make it better. I will also do the same today. Uh, so please follow it up. So let's start. Let's start. Uh, so uh, first thing is that uh, we are talking about the rate of rate and we are going to unlock and uh, unpack the key concepts. So we are focusing on the key concepts and rate and we are looking at the common mistake that students make when they're answering questions. On rate. And again, I believe that uh, you're following me, and of course, you're able to hear me clearly. And the, 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 the sharing of the screen is clear. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Yes. yes. Perfect. Yes. So let's try to illuminate and demystify this concept. So the topic that I'm going to deal with today is rate, I'm looking at the key concepts, uh, the concepts that are tested, the common mistakes that students make. I'm also going to navigate through the organic examination content using the, the Octopath revision model now. So here we are doing now today, yesterday I, I took you through the content topical uh, mapping, eh? but today we are looking now at the question method. After now you have revised the topic using the, the notes, now you go back to the question. But you find that sometimes you may find a book, like in my, the Octopath book as about, uh, as about, um, uh, it's a six question. You are going to find other revision book with two hundred questions. But I can tell you for free. If now you pick, you cannot be able to one hundred questions. Somebody using Oppo one K, you, you are distra You are nuisance to to us. And uh, I forgot to tell you the terms of engagement. You need to be if you remain civil. You need to remain to remain normal. We don't expect to see any abnormal. Every, any abnormal uh, uh, behavior in the chat. Yesterday you behaved very well, remain as uh, muted. And if you want to ask a question, possibly put in the chat. If you want to ask a question, you can also unmute yourself and ask the question. Maybe uh, ask for interruption. Then from there, the teachers on the wall will be able to alert me if there's any need that I need to respond. Um, whatever I'm saying that now, you find this now the, the revision technique is very is very simple and it is the essence of the octopus revision technique that now you pick one question and you are able to exhaust everything you are able to have to to, to expect everything that is a that that is uh related to that particular content because you may not have enough time to revise 200 questions so let's see I'll also be able to have a look at now the, 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 the polymerization and the tangent. These are an area that many students find is very difficult. I'll be able to show you how to be able to understand the concept of uh, the tangent, very easy, using a very short note. So let's look at that one. 
we look at rates. Before I go to rates now, the first thing on rates, you look at the factors affecting the rate of reaction. Like, let me ask you, how does concentration affect the rate of reaction? A student to answer that question. How does concentration affect the rate of reaction? Yes, Moeli. Yes. I can answer that question. Yeah, 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 you can answer. So the it increases the number of reacting particles, hence increases the chances of effective collisions, and, and which increases the rate of reaction. Very good. Uh thank you. That is the somebody's going a little, but what is your name? Victor. Victor, good. So that's the correct way. Many students they'll say increase in concentration, increase the rate of reaction. That is exactly what your grandmother will say. Your grandmother will never step in a chemistry class. So there is no chemistry in such a statement as increase in concentration, increase the rate of reaction. There's nothing like that. So in that kind of a scenario, like uh, Victor said, eh, you have to tell us how does the concentration increase or decrease bring about more effective collision. You cannot talk about a uh, rate of reaction without talking about effective collisions. Just for example, for the students who are here, even everybody who is there, for you to come to this world, your father and mother should have collided with sufficient enough activation energy to cause, to bring about a chemical reaction whose product is you. That is chemistry. That People are, for example, even when you talk about reproduction, a man and a woman have to collide. They cannot bring about a new being or rather a new offspring by simply looking at each other and smiling at each other. So there must be an effective collision that will bring about a chemical reaction. So that is why I'm telling you that now uh, we need to be able, that thing is very common with most of the students, whereby they just say, Increase in concentration, increase the rate of reaction. So this is how you answer it. For concentration, you talk about increase concentration, increases the number of reacting particles in the system, leading to more effective collision. So here we are talking about increase in concentration will increase the number of reacting particles in the system, leading to more effective collisions. Another one, we can talk about pressure. As you can be able to see for pressure, the pressure will bring the reacting gaseous particles closer to each other, and that increases chances of effective collision. So this pressure brings the reacting gases closer to each other, leading to more effective collisions. The concept of temperature, I've always told students that you can even use the analogy of a cow on it. Wherever you find when a cow on it, it bellows. When a cow is on it, it bellows. It, it, it produces a very funny sound when it is now the mowing, when it's bellowing. And uh, the same sound is perceived by any bull nearby who notices this cow needs to undergo neutralization. So the bull will also respond by bellowing back. And according to the commandment and rules of animal reproduction, the first bull to respond, no other bull should also respond the same. So what will happen now, when the cow bellows, a cow which is on it, and the bull bellows, they start running towards each other, communicating more, I'm here, I'm coming, I'm coming, just wait for me, you know, until they come closer to each other. They collide with, with, the, with of course, you remember when the bull reaches the cow, the cow has been suffering and need to be neutralized, will just say, take me, Lord. And a collision occurs between the cow and the bull. A wide precipitate is formed, and that is an effective collision. There is no longer hit with those kind of things. So whatever I'm talking about here is very simple, that whatever you're answering questions on effect on temperature, effect of rate, effect of uh, concentration, always remember that you have to tell us how does that fact affect. So for purposes of temperature, you talk about increase in temperature, increasing the kinetic energy of the reacting particles. They vibrate faster, and that increases the chances of effective collisions. So those are just the only the issues that you need to talk about. And number two, we also talk about for concentration. Remember concentration, 
only we are talking about guns only for aqua solutions somebody will tell you like a, a scenario like a reaction between calcium carbonate and dilute hcl then the examiner will ask you how can you increase the rate of reaction between calcium carbonate and hcl and then a student will go and write by increasing the concentration of the reactant that student always get that question wrong. Why? Because you cannot talk about concentration of calcium carbonate. You say you increase the amount. For solid, is for amount, not concentration. Are we together, students? I think I'm clear about that. Yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's something that is, that's, yeah. a, that's a trick. So, but you can use the word amount, which applies for all of them. But concentration cannot apply for solid. Or even if you talk about uh, for, for only aqua solution, talk about concentration. For the others, amount. Then the other thing, when you're told, how do you increase the concentration of calcium carbonate and HDL? Another student will say, by increasing the temperature of what? That is not an answer. You tell us now, can you increase the temperature of calcium carbonate? No. When you are now doing that kind of variation properly, what you need to do, you simply warm the acid. So you say, warm the acid. That is the way to talk about. In fact, talking about increasing the temperature is a vague thing. When talking about it is something that is a physical activity. When you tell, when you tell somebody by warming the acid, at least that's, we are clear. The examiner can know that's a very good statement. That's a good framing of the answer by warming the acid. If you are using calcium, calcium carbonate, uh, granules can say by using calcium carbonate uh, powder instead of granules. That's how you answer those kind of questions. And I think I'm clear about that. You can also talk about the size of the particles, whereby we talk about now uh, small size particles have a large surface area and that increases the chances of effective collisions. The other thing that is mentioned there is the catalyst and catalyst lower the activation energy of the reacting particle leading to more effective collisions. And it's very simple. Like when you are now cooking and you're trying to light up firewood, sometimes you apply uh, a paraffin. The petrol is like, it is acting as a catalyst, but it's not a catalyst per se. It is just an at analogy because remember now, Realistically, we will not say petrol is a catalyst, but that's exactly what a catalyst does. When you apply, you when you when you pour petrol into firewood or into a tire, vehicle tire, to, to so maybe when you want to, when people are burning those uh, rather the, 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 those two tips, eh? it is simply makes it easier for the tire to burn, for the firewood to light up. So that is exactly what a catalyst does it lowers the activation energy of the reactant simply the activation energy is the minimum energy required to bring about a chemical reaction and i think i'm very clear about that those are some of the issues that students do and uh, we, we we don't want to talk about them so then the, the next is when you're told to draw a diagram and the student are told this is the total mass of the product. Maybe this calcium carbonate, then the, the again is time. Then a student is told, this, this is something that is very common with the, with the, with the student. So when they are told to draw, like for example, something is taking place at a higher temperature, or higher pressure. When they are told higher, they draw it like that. Sorry. They draw it like this then it goes above so this is wrong whereby somebody draws something that is a, if you talk about a reaction there are two reactions one taking place the lower lower pressure another one is a higher pressure so many students think because this one is at higher pressure they they, they are supposed to produce more of the product the product remains the same the only thing that changes is the what the only thing that changes is the the time taken so a faster rate of reaction, the curve will be very stiff. Stiff on the, on the left means the 
rate of reaction faster. If, a re if you are using a very low pressure, then the, the reactant will be on the right and the curve will be gentle. And it applies for all of them. That's the only thing that you need to understand that whether you're plotting higher temperature, higher concentration, the higher concentration is faster rate of reaction, it will occur on the left and the curve will only be stiff. That is the only thing, whether it is a catalyst, whether it's without a catalyst, but remember for a catalyst, Uh, for a catalyst, sorry. For a catalyst, there are two curves. Whatever I'm saying that when you are drawing graphs of rate of reaction using different variables, or rather by varying either the concentration, varying the pressure, varying the temperature, make sure that the curves are, are flattening at the same point. We should not have that because we are using a higher temperature because you're using a higher temperature it doesn't mean that the product will be higher like for example which one is easier to use or rather which one is faster using a gas cooker or an electric eater electric electric heater that's wrong the gas gas cooker is faster than electric heater Practically. Why? <laughs> How? Because you see now, like, let me explain. First of all, how many minutes do you require to light up a gas, uh, a gas cooker? Seconds, isn't it? Five seconds. Yes. But what yes. about electric guitar? Electric guitar, we have the coil, eh? So first of all, we have to the, the coil has to become hot fast. It takes time. Just go and do it. And the way kikombe moja ya maziwa kwa sophoria, the same the same size of a sophoria. Another one kwa electric heater. First of all, the coil lazima the coil for the electric heater has to take time for because before it takes it becomes hot. So that now the heat now can be transferred now from the coil, the electric heater coil now to the what to the sophoria. But for, for what? For the bus and burner, for the gas cooker, the burner is just going to light in a second and the flame is ready. Are you getting the point? Eh? Yes. Yeah, yes. That's, the point. That, that's yeah. some, you know, people just assume, you know, yes. that's what you call a fallacy. Okay. You, you, you continue using so many things and delivery now and then. <laughs> right. but it's wrong. Simply because many people do not do not use the electric heater because of one or two reasons for that. So it's very much important for you to be able to get that. Now, whatever I'm saying is that don't draw a curve just because you're talking about there's a catalyst. Then you tell us now because here we are using a catalyst, the reaction will be faster. And on top of being fast, it will also produce more of the product. No, it cannot. The product remains the same. The only thing, if you're cooking, uh, Gideri using one kilogram of maize and one kilogram of uh, of beans, and uh, you are using uh, somebody is using firewood, another one is using gas cooker, another one is using electric heater. The only difference, the volume of Gideri you are going to obtain because the reactants are the same will also be the same. The only scenario whereby we produce a higher volume is when we are using excess solid reacting with a dilute acid. Like we can have cash, excess calcium carbonate was reacted with one molar HCl. So what does it mean? In a manisha, when the calcium carbonate was reacted with HCl, did all of it react? No. Did not no. react. So no. now that kind of a scenario to assume to produce this kind of uh, the, 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 the curve. But now you repeat the experiment using two molar hydrochloric acid. So if you are using two molar hydrochloric acid, if you increase the concentration of the acid, in Amanisha, there is more of the acid molecules and the, and the calcium carbonate was also in excess. So what are we going to produce? We are going to have a more, more product will be produced because we have increased the concentration of the acid meaning we have added more of the acid molecules and there was unreacted calcium carbonate. 
So therefore, more carbon fog they will be produced. Produced. So that is only now when, when you are told to draw the curve of taint, you're going to draw the curve on the left, may, may being more stiff, and also it is not going to meet at the same point. It is going to, to flatten at a higher level, meaning that more product is produced. For those who have used the guru, you have also been able to get that. So those are the only difference. Then we also have the catalyst. We can also use the concept of energy level diagram to represent. So catalyst is the, the graph of, of uh, effect of catalyst on rate can also be represented using either this uh, straightforward normal rate of reaction graph or using what you call the thermochemistry graph. And that's whereby you're going to have reactant and product. Then you're talking about the activation energy. Without a catalyst, we are going to have higher activation energy. More activation energy will be required without a catalyst, and less activation energy will be required for the catalyzed reaction. The maximum energy structure, this one now is called activated complex. Note, you know, many students, this one was asked sometimes in KCSE 209, and they were told to name label structure X. And most of all the students were saying this is called activation energy, which is wrong. So the maximum energy point along the reaction path is called the activated complex. So how do you get the activation energy? You get the energy of the activated complex. You know this is the energy. Energy of the activated complex minus the energy of the reactant. That is how you get the activation energy. So in short, I'm saying the maximum energy, the tip, Pardon? I've said the maximum energy structure along the reaction path, the maximum energy structure along, um, the, the, the maximum energy point along the reaction path is called activated complex. How are you getting the activation energy? So in order to go up, we are looking at this energy here, activated complex minus energy of the reactant. That is how you get, that is how you get the activation energy. So it's just the tip. Now the manga, the top of the mountain. So here, yeah, this top here is what you call the activated complex. Are we together? Yes. 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 Right. yes. Right. Now that one is understood. Very yes. much, it can continue. Now, another concept that students do not know is how to calculate rate at a particular point. This is called instantaneous rate. We can be calculate rate at eight seconds. Like you see, calculate rate at eight seconds. Mm -hmm. And also calculate rate at 25 seconds. So when you're told to calculate the rate at eight seconds, eight seconds, then you draw a tangent that is touching that eight seconds, that is in touch with that. So you draw a tangent. By drawing a tangent, that is the first marking point. Then you calculate the gradient. Gradient is change in y, change in y over change in x. Let me use a laser pointer. Change in y. Like for example, up on on up and around that what? 36, that is y, up and around uh, four, 36 minus four. Then you go for the other one, the change in x is this one. This is 12 minus zero. Then you get the change in y. You remember the change in y is the product. If it is now the gas produced or the mass consumed. So it's just going to be volume per second or grams per second. So that's the rate that is at minute five. So I'm saying, then at minute 25, at minute 25, you're going to look at this minute 25, you draw a target that is touching. Oh, you can graph. put a graph per second, eh? Yeah? You can put by graph per second. Yeah, they can be gram per second. If now, here we are talking about gram, you know, sometimes it can be calcium carbonate reacting with HCl. In that kind of way, you're going to plot the graph of mass consumed per unit time. Are you getting the point? Eh? Uh, Are you getting the point? Yes. Yes. Yeah, but yes. now that curve will be looking like this. That curve will be different. 
it will not <laughs> look like this. The curve now of decrease in months will now look at something like this. Excuse me, now, sir. Yeah. Yes. Excuse me, sir. Your graph. Uh, you said eight seconds, but looking closely, it's I guess twelve seconds. So um, I am getting confused, sir. No, I'm saying curve will go up. So the eight, eight second is around here. Are you getting the point? Eh? Yes. No, no. Yes. No, no, sasa. Yes. Your target is Peter Hapo. It's Peter Bore. It's Peter Hapo. So maybe you may be. It's not the target. Is not. It's not here. It's not this point. I think that mm -hmm. is now why you are getting confused. Are you getting the point? Eh? Yes. In fact, there is no target that is touching at 12 seconds because your line is just up. So you, when you talk about that target, it must be on contact with that curve at that particular point. Uh, but it can extrapolate. So you see, like for the, for me, for like for this curve, you see the curve is touching. Sorry, the curve is touching the curve. The, the tangent is touching the curve at this at a bad But the fact is now the most important thing is like. It may be able to touch the curve at different points, but that eight seconds must be one of them. Are we together? Yes. I'm still confused. Yes. 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 Confused. It's uh, about drawing this tangent. Can you please uh, be a bit clear? Because um, I'm not yet getting it. So I'm saying, let me let me just get a blank thing like that to have something like that. Sorry. And this now we have a curve like this. Yes. Hello, Anna. So yes. this is now five minutes. To say that you want to draw a target at five minutes. Are we together? Yes. It's now five minutes. So train the EV to see the mm -hmm. So five minutes is for somewhere here, isn't it? Huh? Yes. So then now you can let me get a different color. So now in that kind of now, just draw a straight line. That's now the target. That is now touching that thing at that point. Sorry, it's not coming out very clearly. But I assume that is a straight line. Bora imeshika apo. Tunaelewana? So it doesn't matter how long would that, that target will be. So unaeza chora kadogo, but finally now after doing that, now you can get the change in. Now from here, you can just join it. We just join it to make a triangle. For the, 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 most, the marking point is only this. Making a triangle has no mark. Are we together? That's the target. You draw a straight line like that. Then you can now change, get the gradient by looking at, like now look at that. So this is now the change in, if that was our target, the change in Y, this is the change in Y. The change in X, we are going to pick Hapo, na Hapo. That will be now the change in X. Are you getting now? Yeah. Yes. Because uh, that is very magnetic. That's good. And I like the fact that uh, now you have stressed that I have not understood. It is okay. That is why we are here to, to simplify it. And I think now you have just understood. So you just, it, 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 it doesn't matter. After your, after your target, it doesn't matter. So the, the length of the target doesn't matter. But of course, when you draw a target at that point, you get the change in Y over the change in X, then you get the rate. Then for change in 825, you're going to also do the same. But let me tell you, anytime you're going to find an examiner telling you to calculate rate at five seconds and at 10 seconds, the next question will be now to explain. So where is the rate faster according to this? At eight or at 25 seconds? Where is the rate faster? At eight seconds. At eight. At eight. Why? Eight. At eight. Why is it faster? The volume of gas being produced. Okay, let me, the, for example, give you the reaction here is magnesium reacting dilute sulfuric acid. Magnesium method I react with dilute sulfuric acid, and here we are talking about volume of hydrogen gas. So, why is rate at eight seconds fa faster than at twenty-five seconds? The volume of gas 
produced at eight seconds is higher than that produced at 25 seconds. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the reductance is higher. Yeah. Because what? I go on to get the answer. Because at eight seconds, the magnesium is at a higher concentration. Hence, there is a larger number of reacting, hence a larger number of react of successive uh, collisions. While at B, the magnesium is less, uh, leading to less number of reacting particles, leading to less number of successive reactions, of successful collisions. Okay. Uh, have we got it right? Almost. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yes. yes. Sharon and Osebe, he is almost getting it correct, but there is somewhere he has messed up and he has repeated the same mistake that I mentioned. Don't talk about the concentration of magnesium. We cannot talk about concentration of magnesium. Are we together? Yes. So we say at eight seconds, the amount of reactant is higher. Therefore, there is more of the reactive particle leading to more effective reaction and faster rate of reaction. At 25 seconds, Pardon. just listen, I'm saying, at eight seconds, the amount of reactant, that is enough, amount of reactant is higher. And more of the reacting particles and more higher or rather more effective colli collisions. At eight seconds, the amount of reactant is higher. There is more of the reactive particles and therefore we, we have more effective collisions. At 25... Excuse me, Peter. Yes? Excuse me. I'm asking, you must be slowly so that you can get you right. Okay. Can I repeat again? Repeat again, yes. Yes. Yeah. I've said at eight seconds, the amount Second. of reactant is higher. Yes. Therefore, more reactive particles and hence more effective collisions. Is that one correct? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay. At 25 seconds, some of the reaction. I have, I, I have a question, sir. A yes. question? Yes. Okay. Uh, uh, is it, uh, are we allowed to use, instead of saying effective uh, collision, can oh. we also allow uh, to say fruitful collision? Yeah, they are the same, but you stick to effective collision, the most suitable terminology to use that is highly accepted in NEC. Okay. Thank Just you. The day, 2021, 2020, they rejected the state talking about we reject the uh, uh, successful and the fruitful they all remain the same but just stick to the most suitable answer the idea is remember what i told you yesterday what is tested how it is tested and what is expected so always yeah. stick to the most suitable answer the most suitable terminology to you okay thank you thank you so i've said at 25 seconds we just the opposite some of the reactants have been converted to products. Have you got that point clearly? Yes. Yes. Therefore, yes. few so ones, I do. I want you to be keen so that you follow it with me. At 825 seconds, some of the reactants have been converted to products. Right? Yes. Is that point on? Right? Yes. Therefore, fewer number of reacting particles, therefore fewer number of reacting particles leading to fewer effective collisions. I think you are clear now? Yes. Perfect. Repeat. <laughs> Good people, anyway, let me repeat again. Eh? At 25 yeah. seconds, some of the reactants have been converted to products. Clear? 
Yes. 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 Therefore, there is fewer effective collisions. And therefore, uh, I'm saying few, uh, the fewer number of reactive particles leading to fewer effective collisions. Remember when you just say more effective collisions is synonymous to saying faster rate of reaction. So that's enough. You don't need to. By saying end faster rate of reaction, that is what you call tautology, unnecessary repetition. Huh? What if the gradient is negative? Gradient is negative. Oh. It cannot. It's not possible. I have never seen that kind of a scenario. Unless now you are you, when the reaction is over. Okay, somebody is trying to get here and I'm not getting this. Oh, sorry. Take it in the hand. Let's be a minute, like there's something that is uh, not working here. Take it in the hand. Yeah. I'm not even able to see the name. Hmm? I want to move to the next. Just give me one minute. I correct something here. Yeah. Okay. Yes, my fellow students, hi. 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 Okay, now we are back and everything is okay. I think you're able to hear me? Yes. Mm. Yeah, there was yes. 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 Okay. yes. Okay. Now, I think that one is clear about this, eh? about the concept of range. Don't talk about concentration of solids. Stick to amount. Um, the word amount will apply for all of them, even liquids and uh, even the, the liquids are solutions, gases. It's okay. That's a universal term. Now, the other one is the chemical equilibrium. Many students, when they are given this question and they are told to, to, to identify the four reaction, they normally give this one. They normally give this one as the forward reaction, which is wrong. So the reverse reaction, you're here in and they are zero. The forward reaction, you're here in and they are two. That is when you have, you can be given two graphs. One talking about rate, another one talking about amount. So forward reaction is this one, not this one. So the first one, the one starting from zero is what you call reverse reaction. Because assume now you're having something like a, Assume now you have a question like this. Eh? You have a scenario like this. We have a, maybe you have nitrogen gas reacting with hydrogen gas. Then this is a reversible reaction to form what? To form ammonia. So now, in that kind of variation, I just want to explain. When you are starting, do you have ammonia? Sorry. When you are starting, when the reaction is starting, do you have ammonia? No. It's no, no. That is no. why there is no ammonia decomposing to form nitrogen and hydrogen. So there is no backward reaction starting. That's why for the backward reaction, it is a zero when we are starting because this is time. We are remember we have plotting this one again is time. So at time zero, when the reaction is starting, there is no ammonia to decompose. That is why the reverse reaction starts at zero. But now 
at the beginning, there is a lot of nitrogen and hydrogen. So the rate of the forward reaction is very fast. Dio mana rate yake iko hapa juu, but hii ingine iko zero. Umeelewa? Hapana. No. No, no. Pardon. Oh, teacher. Pardon, teacher. Pardon, please. Okay, can I explain Pardon. again? Yes. Maybe. Here we are having a reversible reaction. Na hii yeah. ni reaction nitrogen na hydrogen to form ammonia. Sawa. The yes. form the one yes. into formation of ammo. ammonia. 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 Backward reaction is the one that involves the decomposition of ammonia to form nitrogen and hydrogen. Correct. At the, at the start, we have a lot of nitrogen and we have a lot of hydrogen. So we have forward reaction is very fast. Now it goes very high here. When we talk about now, this one shown here high, the Manisha here, the rate is very high here. Are we together? Yes. Yes. Uh, Glass. No. Open a night. So let that do up. The area that I know is good. Say, Kianza to nitrogen, hydrogen, ammonia. So at the beginning, there is a lot, the rate of forward reaction is very fast. Why? Because we have a lot of hydrogen and we have a lot of hydrogen. So the forward reaction is taking place to form ammonia at the beginning. Are we together? Yes. 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 So at the beginning, we only have hydrogen and we have nitrogen. So the reaction is taking place because they move the reaction particles. The reaction particles are there. But now for the forward, for the backward reaction, which you call the reverse reaction, requires the composition of ammonia to form hydrogen and nitrogen. So at the beginning, we even have the ammonia. No. 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 Ammonia. The rate of decomposition of ammonia is zero because it's not even. Are we together? Yes. yes. Okay. That is why. That is why. The reverse reaction is zero. Kwa sababu akuna ammonia. There is no ammonia to decompose. So there is no, the rate of reaction, the rate of backward reaction is zero. But now, as the time proceeds, nitrogen and hydrogen restart react to form ammonia. So ammonia in ikidogo in anda could decompose pole pole. So the rate of backward reaction in anda kuongeze, kuongezeka. But now the rate of forward in anda ikiwa very high. But as more of the nitrogen and hydrogen is being converted to ammonia, the rate of forward reaction starts to decrease, the rate of backward reaction starts to increase until they are equal. At that point, we say the, 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 the reaction has attained what? Dynamic equilibrium, where the rate of forward and the rate of backward reaction is the same. Meshika. Yes. 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 The good thing is that it usually is recorded and will also be repeated. So you can still reason to it and to it again. Point is now, I tell you have known why the reverse reaction is Because we don't have we together. Yes. So yes. Now, these are now the same curve can be talked in terms of amount. So this one is very easy if you have understood this one. At the beginning, there is no product. To con a nitrogen, hydrogen forming ammonia. At the beginning, the amount of product is zero. Akuna ammonia. So the ammonia started zero because it's not there. Are we together? <coughs> Are we together, students? Yes. I have a question. Then if, just relax, then you'll ask a question. Then as the as the reaction proceeds, ammonia starts. Form. So you see, amount the aki na nile ki ongezeka ammonia baka ina 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 acha ku change. Then reactants zilianda the kiwa mingi. We had a lot of hydrogen and nitrogen that are reacted to form ammonia. So the the amount of nitrogen and hydrogen is very high. Then as the reaction starts and nitrogen start to be converted to ammonia, 
the amount of reactants start to decrease until a point is reached whereby they no longer change. Remember, at the equilibrium point, the amount of reactants and the products do not change. They remain the same. Ukiambiwa, what are the characteristics of a dynamic equilibrium? The amount of the reactant and the products remain the same. And the rate of the forward and backward reaction remain uh, equal. Are we together now? Pardon, pardon. Again. We are Good. together. We need to yes. move fast. We can pardon, pardon many areas. Pardon, of pardon. A dynamic equilibrium. Pardon, pardon, Manabo. Okay. We need to be faster. Yes, yes. We need to be faster, but we also need to um to, to give those people a chance to be able to get yes. some. Then when they have to be keen. Characteristics some... of a dynamic equilibrium. Yeah. What? The characteristics of dynamic the equilibrium. The amount of products is equal to amount of reactants. The amount of reactants and products remain the same. And the rate of forward and backward reactions mm -hmm. are equal. equal. And whatever I'm saying, you people, they just the way like somebody telling you, if it's something that I have said, you'll also be able to rewatch the video and whatever you not get, you can listen again. Senior query. Yes. So can we proceed, please? Now, yes. And some of these are not question that 98% of the students will get it wrong. State and explain the effect of increase in pressure on the rate of the following reaction. Answer. You can write in the wall very fast. Oh, can I speak? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Oh. All of them, then we can see. Kate, talk. Um, the pressure it favors when there is high pressure, it favors the side with the less volume, and when you have the when the pressure decreases, it favors the side where there is higher volume. Is reaction how will pressure affect? With increase in pressure, the the nini, the equilibrium will be shifted to the forward side. Wow. There will be no effect. There will be no effect. Pressure has no effect. No, no effect. effect. No effect. Forward reaction. No effect. No, no, no effect. effect. No effect. Now, listen, students. Now you are the new part. An increase in pressure. Favors the side with less particles. particles so here we can see. What 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 this is not an equilibrium. An increase in pressure versus a decrease in volume. 99% of you, you have got that question wrong, and it is wrong. So the answer is this. Rate increases, that's the first marking point, tick, one mark. Then explanation, an increase in pressure brings the reacting gaseous particles closer to each other, and hence increase the chances of effective collision. Common mistakes, can somebody read for us? Common yes, mistake is that most students will say no effect as the reaction is not accompanied by change in volume, losing all the marks. Students confuse rate of reaction and reversible <laughs> reaction. Hallelujah. You see, everybody is talking about the equilibrium. Where is the equilibrium here? Have you seen any equilibrium here? You know the sign for equilibrium, eh? Can I ask a question? Yeah, yes, ask Kate. Yes, so Chai, what do you mean by equilibrium? See, we always see that it shifts to the right side 
hence favoring forward reaction. So I don't understand the common mistake in what we are trying to explain. I'm saying in rate. When I was starting this session, I started with talking about rate. Kuna rate na kuna equilibrium. Are we together? Rate is a reaction like this. As long as the reactants are gases, when you increase the pressure, it will bring the reactant gas particles closer, leading to more effective collisions. Let me try to clear the air more. I know where the problem is coming. Just listen. Just follow up this one. Just relax so that I can now go to the next. Now look at that. Angalia as well is us. State and expect the effect of an increase in pressure on the equilibrium below. Now, this is now the question most of you, you are answering now. Kate, are you getting the difference now? Yes. Excuse me, Cha. Mwalimu. Yes. I was, okay, I got the question, yes. But I was asking, if you are to shift the equilibrium, the reaction is forward. Hey, Apo, you explanation does you get? Nasema, talk about there is no equilibrium. Equilibrium is used, we use this sign. That's when you know you are dealing with equilibrium. But now here we are talking about rate. There is a difference between rate. In fact, rate of reaction, that topic is divided into two components. There is the first component, the first sentence is rate. The sentence is about equilibrium. So a question like this, this arrow is showing an, a, a normally an equation that is not reversible. Are we together? So here, when the examiner talks about rate, we only talk about how does pressure affect rate. The first thing that you should have looked for here was, is this reaction involving gases? Yes. And if they're involving gases, automatically, if you increase the pressure, it will bring the reacting gas particles closer to each other, leading to more effective collision. I think I'm not clear. Then, me, now for equilibrium, we'll, uh, we'll bring a question with this kind of arrows. And with this one now, we are talking about state and explain the effect of an increase in pressure on the equilibrium below. And this one now you're going to say there is no effect because the equilibrium is not accompanied by any change in volume. Because here we talk about now the volumes, the volume on the left here are two. The volume on the right here are two. So two volumes, two volumes. So the equilibrium should shift to the side with less volumes, even if it's the pressure. Here the volume. Sure. So no. Yes. So you saw linear reversible. This one is equilibrium. The other one was not equilibrium. It is simply rate. That's why I'm oh. saying, because the teacher started with rate, kila kitu kipe, na akamalizia na equilibrium, kila kitu kipe wa kamutiani unaonanga equilibrium. So, that's why I talk about, oh, don't confuse rate of reaction with the chemical equilibrium. In fact, this question was brought in the year 2010, number five, parties number uh, that is 2010 paper two number five see roman two and 98 percent of the students got wrong are we together yes yes, yes. is it rate or is it equilibrium you see when people here we are telling us the the forward reaction the back way the backward and the forward reaction here are you not even loving it yourself are you seeing any <laughs> Even thing forward and backward reaction here. This question, excuse me, sir. One direction. That correct now? Yes. You yes. Me, sir? Perfect. You know, I'm just, I told you I'm dealing with the common mistakes and I'm navigating through the areas that can give me mistakes. And you, I think you are And in Guinea. Standard explain the effect of increase in pressure on the equilibrium below. Many students again will say Excuse that. Excuse me, sir. Oh, you can take a go. Somebody was asking something. There will be no effect because so, uh, pressure acts on that effect. 
What we mean, solids and liquids have negligible volumes. What do we mean by negligible volume? Which um, means very little volume. Very little, but not the same as zero. So what we talk about here, which side has more volume there between the two? Solids and liquid have solids. So the volume there is almost like a zero here. The volume there is almost like a, like a zero. Uh, like a zero, but not zero. But this is one volume. Which side has Why? more volume? Which volume, which, which side has more volume in the left and the right? The right side. Right, right. right. The right side. The right side. Excuse me, I'm saying, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Solid Solid, I'm a liquid, they occupy very small volume. So what happened is, you know, I keep it. You talk about volume. Okay. You know the most the probably most of you you are not listening. Listen fast. Listen to understand. <laughs> Say if a solid, solid as negligible volume. Negligible is synonymous to infinite smallly smaller, very, very, very small. So in that kind of a scenario, a solid has very, very, very small volume. So this side has very, very small volume. This side has very, very small volume for calcium oxide, but carbon oxide is a gas, so it has one volume. So which side has more volumes than the other? The left or the right? Right. The right. The right. When you increase the pressure, the climber will shift to the side with less volume, which is what? The left. The left. left. Backward reaction fiber. So increase pressure fiber, the backward reaction because it has lesser volumes. Just be guided this. Eh? For equilibrium, and I want you to listen again. For equilibrium, we only, there is no effect if everything that is being used in that equilibrium is a gas or a liquid. Uh, no, is a solid or a liquid. If all the reactants, all the substances involved in an equilibrium is a liquid or a solid, then there'll be no effect. But if one of them is a gas, there'll be effect because that gas will bring about effect in volume. Excuse me, Bonambaluka. Yes. yes, the state symbol for carbon dioxide, maybe it's confusing these learners. It should be gas, but certainly yes. they are solid. Oh, that is, I think, the problem. Gas, yes, yes. Thank you for that. I think I had not seen that. That is it. I think that is also something that I, I think I had meant a mistake when typing. So that was a typo. This should be a gas. For it to bring up an issue, carbon fog there is a gas and it has one volume. Mr. Mbaluk, I have a question. Yes, yes. Go on. Uh, for, for such a reaction at equilibrium, uh, should we be using uh, volume only? For pressure, you only deal with volume, and the volume that brings about effect, the volume of a gas only. Thank you. So that's the point. Of course, I think students have got that point that, uh, uh, there, is that there was that type of that carbon dioxide should be given as a gas, and it has one volume. All the others, there are solid, and they should occupy negligible volume, very, very uh, small volume. So in that kind of a scenario, you are given an equilibrium. If given an equilibrium and one of it is a gas, then pressure will have an effect. But if everything was a solid, then there will be no effect. Another scenario is, uh, another scenario that you need to, uh, to also understand is that uh, an examiner can also tell you what the effect of adding sodium hydroxide to the equilibrium, to this creation. What the effect of adding sodium hydroxide to this equilibrium? Students, so the amine oxide, um, the reaction will uh, uh, shift to the right well, because the because the volume of carbon dioxide will uh, be consumed. Carbon dioxide will be reacting with uh, sodium hydroxide. Solved by sodium, therefore, it leads to the right. 
height. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing that you need to talk about. The sodium hydroxide absorbs carbon fogglide, reducing its concentration. Therefore, the claim. Okay. Look at that. Need <coughs> that equilibrium. Excuse me, I have a question. HCl to that equilibrium. Sodium hydroxide. What's the effect of adding dilute HCl? Somebody to give us the answer. It will favor the backward reaction due to addition of more hydrogen ions. It talk about uh, observation. The key word is observation. That is what we are dealing with. The orange color orange. intensifies. Orange color intensifies. Because our apple, the orange color intensifies because addition of hydrochloric acid lead to in, uh, in, in hydrogen ions. Therefore, they clear sheet to the left. So we talk about the orange color intensifies. What if it was a, a sodium hydroxide? What would be the observation? The orange color, the orange the color, color becomes color less intense. Color. The orange color fades or other dense. But you cannot say the colorless color identifies. You only identifies. <laughs> When the two colors are different, but that is, I can see uh, students are very magnetic in this one. Now, now you may prepare with Uri. Hi, Next. The orange color becomes less intense. Yeah, becomes less intense or rather fades. That's okay. Ah, the next one, I think that is, this one is now easier. When you add diluted yellow, what are we going to do? With the brown color of mixture intensifies and the green color of the mixture fades. No, no, for HCl, the yellow, the yellow, the, the yellow color of the solution intensifies. Just say the yellow color intensifies, that is enough. For sodium, okay. it's going to consume the HCl, so the green color in there intensifies. intensifies. Yeah. There are right. two things. For the first one, listen, for dilute HCl, you are going to say, when you add dilute HCl, the yellow color intensifies and the more of the yellow solid dissolves. See now, when you are now shifting, there is also the yellow solid here. When you, up, when you have a solid, don't say the yellow solid, you cannot say the solid intensifies. You just say the the yellow solid, more of the yellow solid dissolves. That's also the other observation that more the, the, green, the yellow solution, the yellow color intensifies, and we also have a yellow solid. So more of the, the yellow solid will dissolve. Dissolve. Are we together? Yes. 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 So, yes. I'm shifting to the right. So the green color intensifies, and the more of the yellow solid is formed. So for solids, if a solid is involved in an equilibrium and you're talking about shifting, if it's shifting the opposite direction, you're going to say more of the white solid dissolves. If it is shifting to the same direction, you're going to say more of the yellow solid is formed. Can I Lawana? Yes. 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 Now I'm clear. Please make sure that rate is very important. Now, I'm giving you one minute, then we are going to navigate uh, through Maji. We are navigating through organic chemistry. This is an area that we're almost expecting, almost sure of 20 marks in paper one and paper two. So I will navigate through it using the octopus technique. So get ready now. Are you ready for the next session? Yes. 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 So don't, don't no. Go. Yes. Mute your mic, please.
Kusikia hapa muende polepole. Hiyo gani kemi ingia na ngipua. So we are resuming, we are resuming. I think you're all there. So we can, uh, we are resuming in, uh, let people come in so that we can go. So we are resuming, we are resuming uh, for the second session. Remember the same things will also be, uh, So now, I'm not about now the content mapping using the octopus technique. I think uh, you are ready for that. So, so now, when you're using the octopus technique, and of course, you are, uh, for those watching us live from YouTube, of course, you can be able to get from there. You can also be able to, uh, my technical team will also post the link for the, uh, uh, for the Zoom and the YouTube, but of course, I think we are all clear. Uh, uh, the, those guys, those are also following on technical team in the, the YouTube. You can also bring out if there's any question that is being asked from the uh, YouTube live. Uh, so with the organic qualitative analysis using the Octopus technique, I know most of you, if you have used uh, the top notch book for and Octopus, you should have uh, uh, looked at that. So when you talk about the organic uh, qualitative, the, the organic, uh, uh, analysis octopods, you look at the, sorry, you look at the reactions. What are the reactions of alkenes? What are the reactions of alkenes? You know, they, we have hydration, we have hydrolysis, we have uh, addition reactions, we have addition reactions whereby we are reacting the, with the chlorine. We have reaction with hydrogen, reaction with hydrogen halide. Uh, the addition reactions are those ones. And it's very much important for you to understand that uh, addition reactions for alkenes and alkynes 
the uh, symbol reacts with allergens and reaction with hydrogen halides. As we, when we go to the proper analysis, you'll find that many students, when they are told like ethene is reacting with HCl or is reacting with uh, chlorine, they start talking about chlorination, bromination, iodination. Those terms do not give you any mark. So we are talking about we have fermentation, we have uh, dehydration, we have uh, alkanols, we have a um, uh, we have uh, like alkanol, we have reaction with the metals, reaction with the, uh, with, with the test for ROH. Uh, we also have uh, keep comparing the chemical and the physical properties uh, of, um, of, of, of organic compounds. Uh, for alkanols, we have combustion, we have oxidation, acidification, dehydration. Uh, we also we, we have substitution for alkanes. We also have polymerization, detergents, and all those uh, kind of things there. So it's very much important for you to be able to uh, to get to that. So let me now uh, take you through. Uh, let me take you through now the organic qualitative uh, organic octopus technique. Now this is now octopus question model. That's why I said after now you have done. After now you have done the. After now you have done the 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 the, the revision. You have revised the notes. Now you can come and deal with now the octopus revision model. I want you to breathe in and breathe out because I'm going to now take you through. This flow chart is everything. I'll take you through. I'll also post the answers for each, the questions and answers for each of these questions later. Uh, in the, I'll also be able to put maybe something in the YouTube and I'll also be able to put, um, uh, the, the, I'll also be able to post uh, the, the, the answers for these particular questions in my Twitter ado. So make sure that you follow it up from there and it's going to be very easy for you to be able to understand. So let's start. Are we there, students? And are you able to get me clearly? Because if you revise these things properly, you are you are sorted. Students, are you there? Yes, yes. we are. Yes. 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 So now we are ready to... With the octopus in the, in the in the in the deep sea. Now let's start with the reaction number one. This one is summarizing both organic one and organic two. So this reaction one, I want us to go to, but later I will also be able to post. I'll just be able to clarify the issues. I want any issue that you find confusing. Where's Mr. Karani? Are you there? Yes, I'm there, Mr. Mbaluka. Please uh, be able to, to check on the chart so that we are able... And I think I've not made you the uh, uh, course. Let me give you the superior power so that you can... Uh, you... Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mbaluka. Thank you. So who else is there? I think now make sure that you're able to get that, bring up attention to any issue that uh, you think uh, uh, is very necessary. So Mr. Karani is a, is a, is a distinguished uh, uh, chemistry. Uh, chemistry teacher and uh, chemistry expert uh, with an authority in that. And I know that when he's there, we, I, I'm, I'm sorted in terms of the chat. So uh, if you have a question, make sure that you post it there. Mr. Karani, you find something that is a little bit uh, confusing, or rather we, we already know the issues that students have, uh, so that we can clarify it uh, if uh, need be. So thank you, and let's move on. We have conversion of ethene to ethane. Normally, this question, normally in many times, the examiner will give it as a, as a process. Will give it as a process. You can call it process, whatever. So many times you find it being named as a, as a process. So whether it's called a process or it's a reaction, the name for that one is called what? Hydrogenation. Hydrogenation. I'll be able to explain what this normal hydrogenation and the, the, the reagent there is what? Hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas. And the condition is? Presence of nickel catalyst. Nickel catalyst. 200 degrees Celsius. 200 degrees Celsius. 200 degrees 250, any, but just give specific. Just give any temperature within the range of 150 to, to 250. You can talk about temperature of 170, temperature of 180, temperature of 200, okay. 
So in any reaction, be able to know the name of that process or reaction, give us the reagent, give us the condition. You are sorry. Now, yes. the converting to a thing, we go to reaction four. What do you call this kind of reaction? Addition. Substitution. Substitution, Substitution reaction. Substitution reaction. What is the reaction that is needed there? Bromine. 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 We, there is excess bromine, which is used there. The condition is what? UV light. Right. Perfect. Higher. The formula of octane is what? C A H one. What is the formula of octane? C A H one. C8H18. Alkane, you have to know the part. C8H8. C8H8. So, what is E? E takwa C what? If this one is C2HH6, so what will be the C? C what? C? Excuse me, chap. C6. C6H10. Uh, H12. It'll be what? C6? H10. H12. 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 It'll be C6. H10. H12. So, H12. so that way, the other one you get the same, isn't it? C6H12. So which is now exine. So the exine, once... Um, it is oxidized. This one, don't bother about this one. This one, when it's oxidized, of course, this one should be C2H. Should be, this one should be, this is a mistake here. This one is CH2, Maranga, okay. Mm -hmm. Six. And this, this will be exon one, six dial. Exon one, six dial. But that one cannot be tested like that. We are just going to give you the final answer. So here, you see now, we are oxidizing it again. When you oxidize it again, and we we, we have the dial, we get X and one six dioxide. So the idea here is simply to get this product here. So for the examiner, the only thing that can be tested for you to know, here we are having, here we are having, sorry, here we are having exon 16 dioic acid. So the idea was just to come up with this. So this is the first thing. This is the only thing you need to focus on. We have exon 16 dioic acid, and we are having process 14, and we are getting nylon 66. So what is what is this process? Polymerization. Polymerization. And what is the hmm? what? I don't. When you're using a line on 6, 6 you, you, you use exon 1, 6, dioic acid. Wait, right? You'll be using al alkanol. No, no. So what you're doing? This one, I'm tackling formation of nylon 6, 6. So you'll be able to understand it better. But of course, the, this one, we normally use exon 1, 6, dioic acid and exon 1, 6, diamine. I'll be... Still today, after this, I'm, I'm finalizing on the formation of this polymer because they look complicated. I'll summarize it. So keep it here until we are able to finish up with that. So, so for now, I'll, I'll not talk much about this one because I have a session for it, which is like we're going to take like 10 minutes. So, okay. Yes. Yes. Continue. We have process six. We are having ethene being converted to an one two dial. What do you call that one? Oxidation. 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 Is the reagent is acidified potassium seven manganese. I think seven. Seven. Reaction potassium manganese seven. Acidify potassium manganese seven.
or at the side they grow bit just stick to acidify potassium and canary seven for for reaction of alkyl then the the condition there is what heat the condition for oxidation is heat so write it somewhere it's not captured most in many books so condition for oxidation is heat then when you have either yes. one two yes i'm yes. saying the reaction is the, the reagent is acidified potassium manganese seven and the condition is heat sawa okay. yes 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 Finally, after we are through, I'll give you the question, and I'll also post the same flowchart and also the answers. So don't worry. But of course, again, because this is not again going to be posted in uh, in in YouTube, as you you can be able to repeat, listen again as you write down. Sawa? Because of time factor. Because you see, uh, today might be the last time that you're going to have a session, and if you don't listen, and if you waste a lot of time for something that you can easily repeat and follow it again. And rewrite what you have. You know you can now. Uh, you can say it back so that you are able to listen. So, it in uh, now converting it into in process six to a than one two dial. We have said the reagent is acidified potassium manganese. Use a pointer so that acidified potassium manganese seven. The condition is heat. heat. Then we have a done one two diode. We have process seven to get it relin. So what is that process? Polymerization. 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 And the reagent. What? What the reagent that required to form terylene apart from a done one two diode? We have been the dioic acid again today. I'm dealing with formation of terylene. So keep it here until we to formation. I know they are very they are a headache to you, but today we to in a in a very permanent grave. Rather, that confusion must die a natural death. So I'll be able to summarize on that. Then we have ethene being converted to this. So what do you call this one? Which is this process one? Polymerization. 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 Polymer is what? Polyethene. Polyethene. Poly 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 yes. Yeah, it is ethene. Mm -hmm. That is okay. And of course, we require ethene molecules. Uh, we require ethene molecules to be able to uh, to get that. We require the dog or two. So uh, normally we normally use the this one is the ethene. Of course, if you are told what are the what are the what what are the what is the reagent for for this polymerization? Ethene molecules. Ethene molecules. molecules. The, the condition we require high temperature and high pressure, and we also require a catalyst called the the uh, Granata catalyst also used in the polymerization of that. But normally in the books, you normally teach high pressure and high temperature. But of course, you know, nowadays with the way the exam is being set, you may find an examiner telling you, apart from high pressure and high temperature, which is the other condition required for polymerization. We require Pardon the other one? Zigranata catalyst. Zigranata is written as Z-I-E. G L E R G Z I E. I'm saying Z I E G L E R dash. You can put an hyphen. Nata is N A. 
Kaboti, that is Ziegler Nata Catalyst. Double T. Z I E Z I E G L E R hyphen N A double T A Ziegler Nata Catalyst. Thank you. Do that. Do that. The issues of concern. So must you specify you, the. Huh? Must you specify the temperature and pressure? No, no. For 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 formularization, this one just say high pressure and high temperature is enough. Okay, thanks. Only for this one. Sour? Yes. 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 Is it in process? The process I said is polymerization. Okay. So can we a, continue? A question, a question yeah. Mr. Baluka. Yeah. Uh, uh, is this catalyst used only on this on this polymerization of uh, alkenes, or it's generally poly polymerization? Alkenes for polymerization, alkenes. Thank you. Then we have sugar to glucose. What is that one? Fermentation. Fermentation. Hydrolysis. Fermentation. What, Raja? Hydrolysis. We first of all convert. A complex sugar to simple sugar. That is hydrolysis. Then now sugar to crude either known due to Naitanga fermentation. Don't confuse the two. Are we together? The only thing is that most in the the books, they only can say sugar to ethanol. But normally we don't really, there is a the intermediate step. First of all, you hydrolyze sugar to glucose. Why you need hypothesis? Yes. Rudia. You may say my first of all, when you're carrying out fermentation, sugar is first of all broken down to glucose. So that now glucose now undergoes fermentation. It's only that most of the book sometimes they have ignored that step of uh, hydrolysis part. You know, according to, for those who do biology, you know, when you're converting glucose to sugar, that because you're combining two molecules to form one. But now when you're now converting sugar, it's just the reverse of, of, of concept of uh, when you're combining two small molecules to form a large one, that is normally called condensation. And then when now you are converting the, the bigger molecule to smaller molecule, that is called hydrolysis. So sugar is first converted to glucose in the process of hydrolysis. Then now the glucose now undergoes fermentation. So process 11, your fermentation. Sour? Yes. yes. Then, Sour. Have, so what is, the, what is the condition for fermentation? Enzyme, enzyme, enzyme. You can do yeast. Yeast. Uh, you know the yeast, the one that gives out the the enzyme, enzyme. And what is the temperature there? Thirty-four degrees. Thirty-seven degrees. Thirty. Five. Thirty-seven. Listen. Five. Okay, most of the book I think at the temperature of thirty to forty. That is wrong. For anybody who has done biology, tell you this being an enzyme will work best at a temperature of between 35 to 40. So talk about temperature of 35, temperature of 37, and it's okay. Sawa? Yes. Perfect. Yes. Yes. Don't start stressing yourself with the, the real name of the Kamo Kumbuke, just write yeast. That is enough. Crude ethanol to pure ethanol, process 12, that is what? Fractional distillation. You know, this lesson. And then we have it in, it in here, I'm reacting uh, sulfuric acid to capata then hydrogen sulfide. Then the ethyl hydrogen sulfate is now, we undergo process eight again to form pure ethanol. So what do you call that one, process eight? Process eight is fractional distillation. Mm -hmm. Fractional distillation is process 12. Crude ethanol. Hydrolysis. Yeah, so Hydro simply. Hydrolysis. Converting ethanol to uh, hydration. Hydrolysis. Hydrolysis. That is hydrolysis. That's the, the key word, hydrolysis. And I think that 
stick. Now, we are through with that one. We go to next. We are summarizing this thing. By the time to Malaysia to record Malaysia and anything about anything about these things of organic. Aya. Tuko kwa either no upper. Tuko kwa either no. Either not within. What is that? Dehydration. 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 It is dehydration. Uh, what are the conditions for dehydration? What are the reagents? Hey, concentrated sulfuric acid. Concentrated sulfuric acid. Condition is what? Concentrated sulfuric 170 degrees. 160 degrees. 160 degrees Celsius. <laughs> Just listen, temperature of any in 160 to 180, but measure specific temperature. Temperature of 160, temperature of 170, temperature of one, uh, temperature of 180, 170, 160, that any day. That's it. Then we have either null to plus oxygen plus two, G and H. What is G and H? What is that process? Mm -hmm. Carbon dioxide and Carbon water. Carbon dioxide and water vapor. Carbon and water vapor. If it was limited, oxygen in kekua nini? Carbon two oxide. Perfect. Either no plus sodium, we have combined M, which is what? Sodium propoxide. Sodium dioxide. Sodium methoxide. Sodium peroxide. Sodium peroxide. Sodium peroxide. Perfect. Uh, then we continue. But remember, if it was bad, bad. Yeah? Sodium methoxide. If it is magnesium methoxide, and you need to know the formula of magnesium hydroxide, how to write it. <laughs> Number four, process four, we are having either not to uh, that one, whatever we are getting from that end. And I want you to, I want to show you how to get to the answers in the case of Mechanganyekiwa. So, Kipewa Kitukama, sorry. If you are given something like that, Kujo Wikati Apo, Ikatanisha Apo. Ugisha ikatanisha hapo, hii side inakuanga the alcohol, hii mm -hmm. side inakuanga the alkaloic acid. So, ye unangalia hii unaona ikona two hydrogen, two uh, carbon atoms. So, that becomes the, 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 the alcohol is ethanol. Then the other one, you just count. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Three. Propanoid. Propanoid. So, ukikuja hapo, tu utakandika tu CH2, CH3, CH2, OH. That is either no, then the other one it becomes propanoic acid. Then we are adding. Huh? Sure, please pardon. Yeah. What's it? Please pardon in the process four. Process four. We have either no here. Now to corner the this is a this process four is what is what first. Clarification. 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 So the reagent, you know, how do you get the reagent? Already up on a joke on either no. So the kuja apa ui katanisha katikate. Maliumiona kuna COO katanisha apo katikate. This side gives you the alcohol. The alcohol already you have it, which is, which is. So the other one, to get the name of the reagent, you just count the number of carbon atoms. One, One, two, three. Two. Propanoic acid. Propanoic acid. 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 Yes. So this one they become the Q and X, which is a this is a the, the, then we have the process, process five, whereby now we are we are trying uh, now but the opposite of condensation is of esterification is hydrolysis, and you get the responding product which Q and X will be what? Ethanol and ethanoic acid. Ethanol and? Ethanoic acid. Propanoic acid. 
para no llegar a ser perfecto. Entonces, so, esta esta can be hydrolyzed, but ella ya no la hay. Es decir, head of water we can also use sodium. Pero we are still going to get the corresponding uh, alcohol and alcohol. But this one is not the syllabus, so this one ya no la hay. We continue. We have now, we are through with this end. Tuende kwa isa idingine. Kuna ethanol reaction 3 to ethanoic acid. What do you call that one? Oxidation. Oxidation. Oxidation, we require what? To designate mm. it. Reagent is acidified potassium. Acidified potassium manganate 7. Acidified potassium dichromate 6. Or, and then we also require heat. 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 Then we're having a thanoic acid plus sodium hydroxide reaction. Eight, what do you call it? Eight? Sodium ethanoid. Neutralization. Neutralization. That is neutralized. The compound. Chai. Chai, huh? have a question. Let's ask. Reaction okay. three. We, we use both potassium manganese seven and dichromate. <laughs> In fact, acidified potassium dichromate is not going to be alcohol. It is going to be a bad thing. It is going to be The alcohol is tested with the high potassium. So if you inhale and the, 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 it changes from green to you know, orange to green, then the, you are confirmed ROH present. Because it means you have inhaled. You have taken a lot of alcohol that you are simply uh, the stomach. So exactly that is a chemical that is normally used in the alcohol plus and of course it's the one that so dichromate and the potassium and canine seven will work very well for both of them. Sawa? Yes. Good. Reaction eight, we have said that in neutralization and compound M is sodium ethanoate. Then we have the sodium ethanoate. Now we are adding soda lime to get gas P. What is gas P? Methane gas. Methane gas. Methane. Yeah, this Methane. Gas. We are now preparing alkanes, whereby we use a sodium alkanoate plus any soda lime. So, Kama tungetaka ethane, tungetumia sodium propanoate. Kama inge kuwa propano, alafu upate propanoic acid, then you get the sodium, upate sodium propanoate, the gas will be ethane. But because this one is ethanoate, the gas is methane. Then now we undergo steam reforming. Can you, can you repeat? I'm saying, when you're preparing alkanes, you use a, met, a sodium alkanoate to get the corresponding alkane less one carbon atom. Because remember, one of the other products that we form here is sodium carbonate. So the gas that will be formed have carbon atom compared to the, to the alkanoid, which was sodium ethanoid, the part of the one of the carbon atoms. If we want ethane, we are going to use sodium propanoate plus soda lime. Are we together? Yes. 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 But then it undergoes steam reforming in presence of nickel catalyst and temperature maintain thousand to get two products, which is what? In a Hydrogen. Hydrogen gas. Hydrogen gas plus what? Plus carbon. Listen, during panfaja of a carbon two oxide. Kuna mali malimu ali uliskianga ukiambiwa we obtain hydrogen from natural gas. Natural gas is methane. So this is how we obtain hydrogen for for using other process using the steam reforming process or rather what you call the steam catalysis. But that one, again, I don't see any, anybody asking you that, but it's just good to know because it is captured somewhere in your syllabus that we obtain hydrogen for other process from, from what? Cracking of steam. Or rather cracking of rather from natural gas. That's mm -hmm. it. 
So that is it. Then we go here to kona calcium carbide plus water na tukapata gazelle. Excuse me, teacher. Excuse me, teacher. Umesema ni hydrogen gas and carbon 2 oxide ama ni carbon 4 oxide? Oxide. Nimeandika hata. Oh, thanks. We have calcium carbide plus water when they're getting gas F. What is gas F? Ethane. Ethane. So then Ethine. we have Ethane. Ethane uh, reaction being converted to CH2, CH2. What is that reaction again? Hydrogenation. Hydrogenation. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. It requires hydrogen gas. It also requires a. Uh, it also requires a, a nickel catalyst or palladium and a temperature of two hundred degrees Celsius. Process nine is also what. Chapad. I'm saying gas F D is the thine could be converted to a thine. What have we added? We have added what. Hydrogen. Hydrogen. So that is simply hydrogenation. It requires hydrogen gas, nickel catalyst, and a temperature of 200 degrees Celsius. Process nine is also what? Hydrogenation. 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 That one is that hydrogen. we are using one mole of hydrogen. And we can say the reagent there is excess hydrogen. Anywhere whereby the reagent is more than one mole, you say excess. You see, like for this one, we are only adding one mole of hydrogen. Because remember here, if thine is C2, so we have added only one energy. But for this one, to convert this one to a thing, you require what? You require two moles of hydrogen. So in that kind of a scenario, this one you require X hydrogen, this one you just. Excuse me, Chan. There's more than one mole, so you two moles of hydrogen. Yeah, hydrogen. In fact, that uh, the excess, but, but that is the most, you know, sometimes you can be given a question like that, then the examiner tells you to differentiate the reaction process nine. You're going to say in, in process nine, we are using excess hydrogen, or rather we are using what two moles of hydrogen, what they are using hydrogen. Just say hydrogen. You don't have to state saying, as G one mole, two mole, all those kind of things. Just in case you are using more than one mole. Sawa? Yes. Sawa? Okay, then we have this one. Yes. We have the Utukohapa to go reaction four in a to pair C2 H4 Br2. What do you call that one? What do you call that reaction? Question five, this one. Can you say hydrogenation? Hydrogenation. No, addition addition of hydrogenation. Addition of hydrogen halide. Hydrohalogenation. 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 We have added bromine. That answer there is simply addition. That answer is enough. The reagent that is added there is what? Bromine. 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 Hydrogen halide. Bromine. This bromine. Angalia in is heat. Carbon in Billy. Hydrogen in Hine. That is gonna happen. Added the in only. Are we doing that? Yes. 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 This one is bromine. I want you to get them. The reason why I'm saying this one is gas. But this one, what have we had? Then bromide. That's a hindu to me on Geza HR. I want to show you. I want to show you. Yeah. If now you're adding hydrogen halide, you only have one halogen. But as, as two part of the halogen, 
it is important for you to be able to understand that. So get the difference. Because many students are going to bromine when I say the reagent is bromine. So, and for these two reactions, they are simply called addition. What Chana na Mambo Mingi has due hydrohalogenation, due hydronation, due bromination, just call it addition. And there is no difference between, even if the examiner uses the word process or using the, uses the word reaction. Just look at like, for if for example, it's now converting this one, either not to something. So even if we call this one process four or reaction four, the answer still remains fermentation. It cannot change its name. So there are some schools of thought where people to say that if now you are we are told it's a process, it is halogenation. When it's a reaction, it is addition. No, reaction of alkenes with halogens and hydrogen halides is simply called addition. Let me clarify something that many students don't know. Normally, for purposes of exam setting, we normally use the words reaction and process interchangeably. Normally for processes, it is normally used for those industrial processes that lead to formation of industrial products. For instance, hydrogenation is an industrial process because it is used industrially in manufacture of margarine. Polymerization is an industrial process that is used industrially to make polymers like polyethane, like teflon, plastics. Those are industrial processes. Fermentation, not fermentation as industrial process again. If you don't drink beer. Clarification is an industrial process which is used manufacture of fast and air freshness. Somebody can even ask you, what are the uses of esters? Esters are what you're going to use to make perfumes. That's why when you go to a cosmetic shop, you say, I want this kind of designer perfumes. I want this perfume. And then you smell on it, you apply on it, then you say, this one smells magnetic. It's going to give me a nervous magnetic attraction. So it's because it has a pleasant smell. That's why you say esters have a pleasant smell. That is now the the, the technique that is used to make perfumes. Well, when I to make especially the, the ladies and whatever, if you're using a perfume, Excuse so. that smells nice. Air freshener that also brings about a nice smell. So that is what you call about like that. But they can be used interchangeably. Like a, something like a reaction of a, either known as sodium, that could be an industrial process to manufacture what. But I'm saying it doesn't matter whether it is called a process or a reaction. Only hydrogenation. Only hydrogenation. And I think I'm very clear about that. Now you are saying students, you can use one page to summarize all the chemical reactions that can be tested in organic. Are you seeing it? Yeah. Yeah, that's how you use the octopus technique question yes. model. Then, can you tell me? I want you to answer, yeah? I want you to answer this question. Name the fourth member, or rather, name to, to, to which class of homologous series does F belong? F belongs to which class of organic compounds? Alkynes. Alkyl. Alkyl. Okay. Alkyl. Then name the fourth member of the homologa series. Name the fourth member of the homologa series. Butane. Butane. Pentine. Pentine. The fourth member. Pentine. Listen, the fourth member is pentine because the first member is ethyne. Pentine. We don't. Oh, yeah. it. So this. First member is the thine, second is propyne, third is butyne, for this pentine. That is the trick that most of you, you don't get. You can screenshot those answers. I think we have already passed through them. Excuse me, sir, I have a question. Please. What is decarboxylation? Decarboxylation is this process here. 
which is where we are having now the formation of now alkanes. When you, like here we have sodium ethanoid. When you have sodium ethanoid, we will react with soda line. The product is sodium carbonate plus methane. Decarboxylation, you are simply removing the carboxyl group. So we are reacting uh, sodium ethanoid with soda line. The product that too, sodium carbonate and methane. Do we have a carboxyl group in any of the products? Excuse me, sir, I have a question. Thank you. Let's um, that. Have you got that, madam? Yes. Yes. So we are saying we are removing the carboxyl group. It's simply the reaction between uh, metal alkanoid plus soda line. That is decarboxylation because the carboxyl group is removed. That one is really so tell us the spelling of decarboxylation. Unajua kuandika carboxylation? Yes. On under na D E. Then carboxylation. Yeah. Nikambi lona zamanga oxygenated deoxygenated brat. So you talk about D E carboxylation. Then I've got to thank you. Yeah. Yes. I want to answer this question here. Kuna swali hapa number F. That maybe I've not. Um, what is the work of phosphoric five acid? What the work of? Phosphoric five acid. In what? In terms of maybe any the carboxylic acids to alcohols in a, to make a Okay, yeah. No, that, that normally when you are talking about it, that's like, like when you may be able to get this, eh? we have a process three, like converting uh, ethene to ethanol. I think I never noted that. I never under this. This one is simply hydration. Whereby we are simply adding water, we are adding steam. Eh? We, we are adding, a, uh, we are reacting India is steam and uh, we require a phosphoric five acid. Pardon the process. Process three is hydration. It requires steam. It requires a temperature of 300 degrees Celsius. It requires a pressure of 60 atmosphere pressure. 60 atmospheres. <laughs> 60 or 70, I'm 80. It is 60 to 80. So 70 atmosphere, 80 atmosphere, upper PRDP, tunatumianga phosphoric fiber acid. It's a catalyst. So that, that's, a, of course, I think that is where you want it. So this one I'll be able to post out of the methanol and pentanol. This one can only be used in terms of physical test. Remember the low, the, the low carbon alcohols are very soluble in water. But the higher alkanols are insoluble in water. So this one, like for methanol and pentanol, you can each of them in separate test tube, then add equal amount of water. Then methanol will form a uniform solution. Pentanol will form two layers. We can be told to differentiate ethane and ethene. This now, like you can burn. Ethane burns with a blue flame. Ethene burns with a yellow sooty flame. You can also bubble each of the gas separately through acidified potassium manganese 7. Ethene will decaralyze purple acidified potassium manganese 7. Ethane, it will not decaralyze purple acidified potassium manganese 7. So this one, you just use the knowledge that I've given you on the qualitative analysis. And that is how you are able to uh, summarize the entire organic. I have a question. Yes. What about differentiating ethanol and ethene? Ethanol and ethene, copy. Oh, ethanol and ethene, eh? Uh, mm. you, ethanol as ROH. How do you test for ROH? You use acidified potato. Let me see. Ethanol and ethene, let me see. Ethanol and ethene, you can burn, of course, you can burn. You can burn each of them, either not burn with a, a blue flame, it then burns the yellow sooty flame because it's unsaturated. 
Then we also have, uh, you can use, um, you can use acidified potassium dichromate 6. It then, ethanol will change acidified potassium dichromate 6 from orange to green, but it then, the purple acidified potassium organic 7 does not change from orange to green. Remember, potassium dichromate 6 only tastes for ROH. So you use that one. You can also add zodium metal to each of them. Either no, there'll be bubbles of a gas, but in it, in, you cannot, there'll be no gas that will be formed there. You can, I'll be able to post more of the answers uh, that can be captured there, uh, in, in possibly in my Twitter handle, uh, the answers for those questions. So I think now that's okay. I think people are tired. You are not able to, uh, are not able to listen to the presentation. I think, uh, yeah, I think people are tired that we, we I don't, we, you are tired. We are not tired. Yeah? Excuse me. Yes. You the still explain it. We are tired. And <laughs> You're saying what? Electrochemistry. 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 Yeah, it's electrochemistry. Even, even in detail. Uh, during the color exams, most people had written it and got it wrong. I'm not getting you. Please, can you repeat what you have said? Hello? Somebody was talking has disappeared. I, I was asking. During the CAL exam, uh, the explanation yeah. you give for the yeah. uh, yeah. majority of people wrote exactly what you said but got it wrong. Or maybe there was like a mistake they made, a common mistake that you identified. About the, like you, you know, there is the key word there that now, if you say between a thing and a thing, you are supposed to say bubble, each of the gases separately to acidified potassium manganese or, or rather you can put down you are saying now bubble each of the gas separately through acidified potassium manganese 7 in a thing it will change from purple to colorless then in a thing, do not change. So many students are writing, bubble the gathered through acidified potassium manganese 7. That is wrong. Are you getting the point? That is now somewhere many students oh, write. Thanks, thanks. Are you getting the point? Eh? That's a different thing. When you say bubble the gas, it means you are putting the gas of the two of them in a syringe and you are, you are, you are bubbling them through potassium manganese 7. Just like, for example, if you are told even how to pray, to say, methano and Methanoic acid. This is how you are supposed to say. Put methanol and methanoic acid. Put two cubic centimeters of methanol and methanoic acid into separate test tube. And to each of the test tube, add sodium carbonate. Sure. In methanol, sure. there will be bubbles. In methanoic acid, there will be bubbles. Whatever I am saying, sure. the ex just Listen, I finish. It's good you wait, I finish making a statement so that you can make an interruption. Whatever you are talking about separating, you have to bring about separately. Because you just say hard sodium carbonate, it means it can be a mixture to read. So you say you have to put each of these ones, like sodium carbonate and methanol, or rather methanol and methanoic acid. We know methanoic acid it will react with sodium carbonate. You can also say, put each of them in a separate test tube, then add two drops of, of acidified potassium dichromate 6. Methanol, it will change from orange to green. But methanoic acid, the orange color does not change to green, rather remains like that. It's good that you know, you have to bring out the idea of separately. Yes, somebody was asking a question, Melvin Mwenda. Thank you. I was asking, is there a difference to say you pass or to bubble the gas? Remember, it yes. is are, are gases, so you bubble, not pass. You bubble the gases. Thank you. 
it's something we don't penalize, even when you say hard. <laughs> hard means not to add it in. But you know, you know, any or alkanes from, or rather, all hydrocarbons, carbon one to four are normally gases. That just know that. Carbon one to four are gases. Then the, the others are liquid. So that is the, but even if you don't say, whether you say pass or whatever, you'll still be able to, we don't penalize you for wrong English, of course in chemistry. But of course, it's always good to write something that makes a lot of sense. It, the, the most sensible thing. I wanted to to tell you how to prepare rubber and uh, the, the soap and the polymers, but it seems people are tired. No. 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 You want, you want no. Not, uh, to continue? To, now, yes. can you give me yes. 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 I have a question. Uliza? Is it correct when we use acidified potassium dichromate in explaining theory? But remember, acidified potassium dichromate is only test for ROH and ROH alone. Of course, many books have captured it. It also tests for double, but that's wrong chemistry. It will never score anywhere. It's only that the, the theory people used to mark it, but we have it, that thing has even been expunged from LB. So it does in the school. As, remember, acidified potassium dichromate 6 only tests for ROH and ROH alone. The only one that will test for ROH and double bond and triple bond is only acidified potassium. And when you are adding two things, don't, don't say the changes. Tell us now the acidified potassium manganese changes purple to color. And use the word changes, not turns. Thank you. We are we okay? Can I give you? Can you give me two minutes? And also, I take some coffee, and you also take some. Then we we revert back. We continue. I navigate through the summarization of those complex. A minute before you go. A minute before you go, sir. Excuse me, sir. Yes. Before you go, this this uh when you're given a monomer and then you're told to draw it's a polymer, mostly these monomers containing an alkyl uh in its structure. How do you go through it? When are you told to given a monomer to draw the polymer? Then it go then. And then the polymer, the monomer, uh, like when you're told to draw the polymer of propeno nitrile. Ah. I wish I could have, uh, yeah, I know how, I know if I they have uh, seen it, the guru. Let me see if I can be able to write it somewhere. Rather, maybe somebody can do it for us so that we can be able to, to get that. It's very easy. For, 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 I'm coming to that because I'm dealing with the, the, the condensation polymer. So I think by the time it will be very easy for you to be able to understand that. So that is what I'm calling the next. Baba? Okay. Just, I'm giving you two minutes, then we'll revert back. Because of the students who are requesting, I I expound on that. Remember, I'm just giving things uh, free of charge and I'm just giving back to the community because I don't think I'll be able to get more time today. But uh, because of the, uh, due to public demand, I'll see if I can get day before before Friday, maybe in the evening, but we can tackle on that. Mr. Baluka, you have to end on electrochemistry because majority have a problem there. That is what they have said. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I, love, I love to prepare it possibly. Can they set aside to do an extra yes. maybe, maybe on Friday or, or Saturday, you can arrange a meeting for the same. No, no problem. So make sure that you're ready. Not a must in the you are where we are following the session from. So we are going to be a bit, allow me to be able to, uh, to take a cup of coffee and uh, okay. I'll be back. Please, uh, okay. Yes, yes, sir. But because of the power that you are talking about to continue, I love. I have no option. Of course, currently I'll be making a, a call to know that. Always tell us where you are. Maybe from where you are following the, the session from.
Okay, uh, we are back. We are getting back in a, in a few minutes. So, are you there, students? You can. Uh, uh okay we um we, we 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 are getting that so i so we are looking at the formation of uh the polymers, uh, not before we go to pollination polymers, I'll be go very fast. I think within a very uh, short time, I'll be through. So we're dealing with saponification process. Formation of soap, that is saponification. And I want to take you through uh, the formation of soap uh, so that we can be able to, to, to move from there. So what will end up? Even if uh, they are not there, we continue from where we have solved. They'll follow it up in YouTube. What happens? Want to understand? Don't want to see. They go up on one. So. Are you seeing my screen? Are you seeing my screen? Eh? Students, are you there? Richard. Yeah, we are seeing it. Yes, I'm here. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes, look okay. You had um, uh, yes. uh, muted us. Eh? Oh, no. oh okay. yes, we are back. You mm -hmm. had muted us. Yes, I'm here. Too good, too good going. Oh, now just let's. I I just handle these issues that those few issues that uh, students are a little bit confusing. So, I, and rubber is an elastroma, which means its elastic properties is straight. Original shape. I just wearing rubber is an addition polymer of isoprene, which is the two. In. From, in from there you you date with the addition polymer but this one is a very special polymer it's a diene you know what a diene means it has more than two uh double bonds that is how you need to name it so like for example kichkua here let me just show you they're not the diene two we have three and we have four. So you are told when you are naming, you start counting for the third nearest location of the branch. Of course, when you start counting, it will be this side, side nearest location of the branch. So here you see there are two double bonds, one between the first and the second, and the other one between the what? The third and the fourth. The fourth. So the you fourth. are when you're naming alkenes, you tell us where the double bond is. So when the examiner tells you, uh, when we talk about diene, it means there are two double bonds. Where are they located? Ukiandika one in a manisha, you only pick the first carbon atom where the double bond occurs. So here there are two double bonds. Moja in kwa first and second, so we pick one. The other one, third and fourth, so we pick three. So the name is... 
one, three, dain. Dain means there are two double bonds. Where are they located? One between the first and the second, the other one between the third and the fourth. Then there are four carbon atoms, so it is a boat. And then it has a methyl in the second carbon atom. That's how we arrive at the name two methyl boat one, three, dain. Yes. Richard. Sour. Yes. Yes, it should be same as dain. Dain means two double bonds. You have to tell us where they are located. One and three means the first double bond occurs between the first and the second. The second double bond occurs between the second, the third, and the fourth. Then the longest carbon chain has four carbon atoms, and the other branch in the name of middle, which is on the second carbon atom, period. Now, 20, how do you form um, I, I, uh, natural rubber? How do you form natural rubber? It's very easy. There are two double bonds here. So what happens? One of the double bond will break. One of the double bond will break and the other one will shift its position to the middle. So moja it will break. Then the other one will shift to the middle. So we have two double bonds, but those are the edges. So one of it breaks, the other one will shift to the middle. And then one it shift, then we are going to have three ends on both ends. And that's how you form iso uh, rather natural rubber. Look here. During the polymerization of uh, rubber, one of the double bond breaks. One of the double bond breaks. And the remaining double bond will shift its position to the middle on carbon two. This leaves a lone electron at each, indicating that more monomers can join. You know the concept, let me just explain. Yeah? The concept of... Uh, Therefore, one of the double bonds still remains after polymerization. So we have this, eh? I think you are seeing it, to Konahi. So what happens is that one of these double bonds will break, this one, it may break. After this one breaks, what happens is the other one will shift to the middle. Are you seeing what I'm, what I'm doing? Yes, yes, sir. If it break, we are going to have something like this. So I'm just this is just showing you. This is the same thing. That one breaks. I want to believe you are seeing. One of it breaks. I want to make it. So this one breaks. One break, the other one will shift in position. The other one shift position to the middle. So what happens like now? At that point now, we are going to have a free end. On both ends, there'll be a free end. That now can join more of the monomer. Let's proceed. I want to show you how, how this thing can be very easy. Now, let's see. So, the double bond in the break, so there were now free electrons. So, the both ends now are free. And when now they are free, we can have many monomers joining and joining to form a very a very large, uniting now the monomer. Let's now unite the two because we have this monomer and this monomer. Then we want to unite them. Then you're going to have that until there's a free end on both ends. So it can continue. You know, somebody can even tell you to, to draw a natural rubber showing two monomers, containing two monomers. You know, those questions are very common. But when they tell you to draw using very common one, 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 uh, two monomers, remember this one, you don't put it like a dot, a dash. That dash means there's a free electron. Just like this and that can come and join. You know, these are free electrons, these are free electrons that they can come and join, born like that. It's just like, for example, when you are with your friend, so what happened during the double, the breaking of the double bond? Like, assume you are holding your friend with two ants. So what will happen? So break So it will free. So it will be And you can bond together. That's exactly the essence of polymerization. One of the double bond breaks and the other one shift to the middle. Therefore, there'll be a free end, a free end, a free end, a free end. And then they can now join together. Then what they join now, if now they combine the process now can be written as that. This now we have the, the monomers, then we are going to have that. Yeah, so you show with that. That is now the final formula of the polymer. So simply in short, that is stress is the, 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 the way of polymerization of these things are that 
one of the double bond breaks, now the other one shifts to the middle, then you are going to have the polymer, which is down the natural rubber. Is that, does it make it very easy? Yes, sir. Very, very easy. Happy, sir. Does it make it very magnetic? So this and whereby we did my chemistry very pragmatic manner. So, so to reorder the machine that we find knee, we have now the the monoman dio here apa. So what really happens? The double board moja in a break. You in Guinea shift to the center. Then finally we are going to have free end, free end, work a work a bracket, now work a hand. Period. You have drawn the pole. Perfect. I have a question. Can I ask? Uliza. Okay, so um, there's this term that someone was saying that when you're writing the monomer, you're not supposed to include the hydrogen ions. Is that true? Which hydrogen ions? The ones present in the carb in the hydrocarbon. So one See, hydrogen atoms. That you just need to write things like this. Yes. <laughs> no. Nothing like that. And the only thing that I wanted to tell you that because of purposes of uh, exam uh, shifting, the only thing that I want to open these ones as much as possible. Let it be open. We see Andike Ikiwa combined. Let it be. Mm -hmm. Are we together? Yes. Yes. Methyl group, just write it somewhere. The methyl group should always remain open when you don't compress it. It's only that I'm doing it like that for purposes of presentation. Remember, when you are starting, look here. When you are starting, Unagubuka Villa in this one. I don't know whether it is in there. I want to see this there. Yeah, like this. Let it be like this. Sawa? Yes. Let it always be like that. That's okay. Thank you for that. I think, uh, uh, can I go to something else? They were, can I mark okay. the yes. Excuse me, sir. Um, yeah? Instead of shifting the double bond, can you just fold the, can you just fold at that particular point? You? Instead of shifting the double bond to the sec, between the second and third, can you just fold that? Can you just fold like the the structure? So that the, instead of the one who's back even like in the bottom of the wave, is that what you're trying to insinuate? Hello. I'm saying that instead of instead of shifting the the, uh, the double bond to the, between the second and third, the double bond the backy paliko alafu yo ariko pekiake. I, 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 like, I love, sir, it will be the, the, the breaking of the two will be on the two on the two carbons, the first and the second. No, there's no other way. That's the only, in fact, you are going to come up with another compound. That does not My friend, any. excuse me, Mr. Mbaluka. We are being taught or being reminded on how we are forming polymer. So if we bring some other, we, I have uh, some students who normally come up with such issues. They come up with ways of coming up with something you are teaching, but she is trying to come up with something you don't know where she is coming with from. So it's a challenge. <laughs> uh, let us stick to what we are being taught. You know, science is very pragmatic. Eh? Science is yeah. logic. So yeah. anything is dogmatism. And we have what you call conventional way of doing things. So if now you try to come up with those other imaginary methodologies eh? you are going to come up with your own uh substance your own compound which does not exist and you lost so just stick to that i think students we have agreed that this method is very easy just shift this one shift the this one break the other one shifts see anybody can understand that and we agreed it's very easy isn't it yeah yeah can we stick to that There's yeah. no method. can we go please let us please move to the next and that is now I want to talk about saponification. Manufacture of soap. So we are dealing with saponification and uh, uh, in saponification, vegetable oil in Mexico. Sure. Sure. 
before we before we go to saponification i had asked you a question on how to make the poly to draw the polymer of propinonitrile when uh, and you're told to, to draw a polymer containing three repeating units so how will you draw it Poly Poly propino propinonitrile polyponitrile eh? let me just give me one one second let me draw it so that i think that the uh, it's also something that is very easy, so I can. I think it's somewhere in my books because you yes. know you can. Yeah. So, uh, which is number? If you are using Guru, can you please tell us it is which page? Uh, we it. got papers from your from you. You sent them to our school, and then our teachers gave us the Octopus Revision Strategy Alliance High School Workshop, twenty twenty three, page fourteen. <laughs> Oh, we are in. How are you? Okay. Do you have the? I'm trying to get the the real. I know it is somewhere, but I'm. Can you can you be able to get the the structure? Can you read for me? <clears throat> it is a a few, like two carbon atoms uh, having a double bond, and then okay, it's hard to read out. That's really and then C double bond C and then it is CH2 double bond C H and then C triple bond N. Triple bond N, eh? Yes. Okay, I want to try to get. I think it's if it's not in that one, it is in the it is in the book form. That is what I want to get it because I I want it. I think it's something that uh, it's only that you are just scared because of that uh, name. You Gina to in a shida, but let me just uh, simplify it. Uh, I'm not getting it. Oh, huh? yeah. Yes. Let me draw it. Any, any, any double. You the simplest, just like that. So we a then there's a double bond. There's a double bond. There is carbon. And this one is just written, this is simply CN. Here is CN too. The so the, okay. Then there is hydrogen. And there is hydrogen. Okay. So, uh huh. Now, you do the same. It's only that see, this CN is, is further broken down into a double or triple bond there like that. Cindy? Yes. You see my screen? Yes, I can. So you see, you are told to draw three repeating units for this. And because the examiner has told you it is propenitrile, you think this is very satanic. It's very easy, my dear. This is what you need to do. Wherever you are carrying out any polymerase, don't be scared. Eh? Sorry. Don't be scared because the name is so tricky. As long as there's a double bond, just break the double bond. Changes to what? To a single bond. Tunayenda pamoja? Yes. Yes. Weka hivi. Sasa weka hydro. Copy. Just copy that thing the way it is. Copy. See. And uh, repeat again, just copy. The only thing that you have changed is breaking the double bond to single bond. Okay, break EV. This is what you need to do. Now, work a dash, work a dash. Evo, Evo too. Work a dash, then right hand. That is, that is the polymer. That is what Kindly repeat. I think it's something that is that. I'm saying E kitu vile iko, E ndio the monomer. To convert it to the polymer, just copy the way it is, but change the double bond into a single bond. Sawa? Sawa? Yes. Yeah. Uh, if you break, copy whatever is there, then on the end, they can dash, dash. You and your polymer. 
the examiner can tell you to draw three repeating units. Just repeat these things. You repeat Maratatu, EV, single bond, EV, work a CN, work a hydrogen. Just copy that thing, work a hydrogen. Work a hydrogen. Aya. Dash, dash. She can issue na ingine. Repeat it again. If it too, hydrogen. Again, hydrogen. Dash, single bond. Vile eco. This one, CN. Then, hydrogen. Dash. So this one is for two repeating units. Ya tatu, tutaeka hivyo, hata ukiwa force, tutaongeza tu ingine hivyo. But now if you are two, three repeating units, you don't, you don't put brackets and you don't put N. Sawa? Yes. Sawa, sasa? Yes. And then, I have a question. Mr. Mbaluka, Mr. Mbaluka be, before they ask another question, uh, I think the student wrote that formula directly or in a continuous uh, form, CH2 double bond CH, single board C, triple board N. If I'm not wrong, eh? that is why she could uh, get it as a monster. Some have encountered a, a no, problem. Was, the way it is written is just direct. It's only that now in America, because it's just copied from my book. It's, okay, I was saying... I, I was saying there is another encounter I've ever encountered with some students about the polypropene. Yeah. If they write it in a continuous form, yeah. if they don't put that a, 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 a branch of CN, if yeah. they write CH2, uh, double board, CH, uh, then CH3, uh, I think they can get it wrong if they write it in a continuous form as uh, the student wrote, if I'm no. not wrong. So in polypropene, we normally write C, uh, we open uh, a board, that is HH, then double bond, then another C, then we project a, a hydrogen atom from that C, then either on the upper, uh, on the lower side, we write CH3. Yes, I think what we are going to do in uh, in the near, we'll be able to continue with that conversation later because of the mm. time factor. This one, you know, is a, just an alkene, so there's nothing even to to draw in a continuous model. But anyway, okay. without wastage of time, let me be able to continue from that. Whatever Malimu is saying is about there is that confusion with students, especially when I talk about the the the, the propane propane lazima wandi kehivi like for it, and this is what exactly the teacher is trying to say. Double bond EV. So the methyl group is here. Yes, yes. So the methyl group is there. Then you're going to have hydrogen. Then you're going to have hydrogen. That's exactly I know that that's exactly what you wanted to say. Yeah. So that now would I break through the double bond, then they are free and free, and then you just join. Exactly. Like when you are drawing. When you are dealing with polymerization involving a double bond, just copy that thing. Vile equal to change the double bond into a single bond and let it there be a free end. Then you can just join two, whether they have told you two, whether they have told you three, whether they have told you four. And I think that makes it very easy, student. Are we together now? Yes, Kapiza. Uh, yes. That girl who was yes. in the Yes, Nimelewa. Yeah. But then, what, uh, what's the type of polymerization? What's the type of the polymerization which leads to the formation of the polymer above? That is polymerization. Anything that has a double bond is addition. Oh, thank you. So now we go to uh, uh, vegetable oil mixture uh, of sodium hydroxide. Uh, or rather, normally these are we normally prepare saponification. Vegetable oil is mixed with concentrated sodium hydroxide and boiled. You have to say boiled, not heated. To the mixture, you add solid sodium chloride so as to reduce the solubility of soap in glycerol, or rather to precipitate the soap. This separates the soap 
from other products formed in a process called sorting out. So e, there's a lot of questions that can be tested here. First of all, manufacture of soap requires three steps. Vegetable oil is mixed with concentrated sodium hydroxide and boil, tick one mark. Sodium chloride crystals is added. Then you filter to obtain soap. But now there are questions that can be asked when you have a vegetable oil, sodium hydroxide, then you leave with what is, then you're told substance Y. Then you're told what is substance Y. It is solid sodium chloride. What's the role of it to reduce the solubility of soap in crystal? And what is the name of that process sorting out? So you see, the addition of sodium chloride can be tested in three ways. You can be told what is added. You can be told the role of it. You can be told the process. Are we together? Yes. Yes. Perfect. Yes. Uh, the general formula of the hero. That is the first. Normally prepare salts of sodium. So let's look at now the formula, how to prepare salt. Many students, when they are given something like that, they start wondering, when you're given this kind of a thing, you are dealing with sodium hydroxide. So what you need to do, cut a ikito from here. Oh, let me just show you because it is animated. Let me not reanimate it. Let me just continue. So what happens is, there we have the fat oil. This is simply fat oil, which is simply called an ester. You could either, what is this? Just say it is an ester. So when you're told, what, what is this one? This is an ester. Fat and oil are esters. This is an ester. This is an ester. It is reacting with sodium hydroxide. So what happens now from there? Let, I just want to show you. Uh -huh. So now what happened to that now? This component here. Uh -huh, let me just see. I have an animated. This. We get so uh -huh, plus this. So let me show you what happens. No, no. What we are saying is this, this demarcation here with the blue. So this part, this part now combined with sodium. E in a good in a combined with sodium. So to na cut this side, to na kuja, to na replace na sodium. Now you part, and you may back it, the CH2, CH, CH2 combined with OH. And this is where they give this. So you get these ones now. These ones now combine with OH to form glycerol. Then the remaining component, these ones combine with sodium. And because this is in it, that would be a to not the formula of soap, like this now the soap, and this now the glycerol. Let me just try to summarize it even better. So here, in short, can be written like this, sorry. RCOO, CH2, this is now simplifying it. RCOH, CH2, CH. So what happens now, the black component combined with sodium, ikapata soap. The red component, CH2, each quote to vileiko, ikuje combine OH, ikupe glycerol. Now, ER is any, it is an alkyl. Alkyl is anything with the formula of CN. Two N plus one. So E ikiwa R C ikiwa 10, H itakuwa 21. Sorry. Kwa nini kwa hapa? I'm saying this R stands for CN H2N plus 1. If N is 10, H itakuwa 10 times 2 plus 1, which is H21, then COO like that. Let me show you a real example. Hii ndiyo mmepata kwa kwa kitabu sasa. C17H35. So, tumesema, niniyo ya hii naendanga na CNH2N plus 1. Kama hii ni 17, 2 times 17 is equal to 34, plus 1, 35. That's exactly what you need to do. Then you just copy the way it is. This is COO. So what you do, the same way I've told you, this component, unakuja unaikata. Hii component na kubaina sodium in a form the salt. Then the remaining component in a remainder OH in a tupea 
the glycerol. That is now this part. Combine with this to give you glycerol. Let me give you, show you the, the summary. So this is how now it is written here. That CH17 CH then COO, you just unaikatia to have, even in antiqua kwa mtia kwa kitabu, then plus this one. So this component, just pick it the way it is, one, C17, eight, that COO, and because it had to work to three, then it is combining sodium. The remaining components, CH, sorry. The remaining components, CH2, CH2, CH, combined with OH, gives you glycerol. And that exactly, what you can be able to get. Just focus on this last statement, this last equation. Unakuta unangalia maali, o imeishia chukua hapo. Combined with sodium, you get yourself. The other the remaining components, CH2, CH2, CH, CH, CH2, CH, CH2, combined with OH to give you glycerol. Does it make your work easy, students? Yes. 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 That is exactly yeah. how you yeah. say 17. If you have to say H11, what do you mean? If H is 11, if C is 11, H is 23. 23. So don't bother. Just know this thing is called an ester. Then, just know this one is... Sorry. All right. This thing is like this. This thing is... Right. If this one is called an ester, this one is called so, and the other one is period. What channel is the mingi the propan one, two, three, three octadecanoid? I'm a sodium octadecanoid. Just know this one is called so. This one belongs to class of organic compound called an ester. Tunelewana? Yes. Thank you. Yes. For you the yes. Play with the simple way of uh, understanding this one. Apple is a vegetable oil, and some oil. It is a sodium oil. When you boil, add sodium chloride. The role of sodium chloride is to put a bit of salt in glycerol. Then you filter. The salt will be the residue. Glycerol will be the filtrate. You know the letter that you come from Tiani. We will examine that and we will find that this is X. And we will what is X. X is sodium chloride. What the role of sodium chloride? to reduce the solubility of soap in glycerol. And what is the role of that soap? It will to call, what do you call that process? It is sorting out. Know what is added, the role of each and the process. Then when you filter, you're going to have the soap as residue and glycerol as the filtrate. Then during manufacture of soap, there are some additives that are added to improve its coolage. Kuna different types of soap. Soap kama kuna panga soap, kuna dofu, kuna itijui kifaru, and kuna zingine kama geisha. What are the differences? If you are given panga soap students and you are given geisha, which one do you pick first? Ya kuoga. Unaenda gani? Geisha. 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 Ama tu. Kona rupi mzuri. Geisha, why do you go for geisha? So the issue is what, what makes geisha better than the other? We first of all, it could color. It's in your query. Yes. So addition tangents, perfumes, in other than Nukia Viduri, then Kuna Adiseptic, Kama Destro, Sikuna in a tanguaji. Kuna in a tangua, is it Dest in a tanguaji? What do you call this? Uh, Get it soft. Get it so those ones now you see they are the ones that we add a deceptic so we have a this addition of a deceptic addition of coloring agents addition of builders and perfumes these ones are added to improve the quality of soap sour you can be yeah. added what improve the quality of soap things are not in your notes fat and oils are est parts of car in animals while animals uh, while oils occur in both plants and animals Fat is saturated while oil is unsaturated. To differentiate between fat and oil, you add a few drops of acetaldehyde, potassium, manganese 7. In oil, purple potassium, manganese 7 will be decaralyzed, while in fat, it will not be decaralyzed. So, somebody will find an examiner out telling you, 
what observation it meant when acidified potassium and kn7 was added to a sample of eliander oil Maybe your dog is oil. Oil are unsaturated. So when you add acidified potassium manganese 7, it will be deca decaralized. Yes. Yes. But always remember, that's why we always um, convert oil to fat through hydrogenation. Hydrogenation can only take place in a substance that is unsaturated. I can tell you, describe how you can convert oil to fat. Then you're going to say bubble hydrogen through the what? Oil in the presence of nickel catalyst and, pre and, and temperature maintained at 200 degrees Celsius. The oil will be converted to fat. That's now the end of the fornication. Now, when the question is the in the Omuna, in the Tanganyan, three, three pages. I'm just going to do lines. How do you make so place detergents? They are normally made from petroleum products. How do we go about the hydro? I reacted with benzene to form alkyl benzene. Thick. The alkyl benzene is treated with sulfuric acid to form alkyl benzene sulfonic. Then, benzene sulfonate is hydrolyzed sodium hydroxide to form sodium alkyl benzene sulfonate, which is the surplus. And though I describe how to make surplus detergents, you only need three lines, which is going to give you three marks. That carbon is reacted with benzene at high temperature to form alkyl benzene. The alkyl benzene is treated with sulfuric acid, alkyl benzene sulfonate. And finally, hydrolyzed sodium hydroxide to form alkyl benzene which is the surplus carbon. And the summary in your heat, you can have benzene, you can hydrocarbon. To react to them, you get, then you add sulfuric acid, you can have alkyl benzene sulfonate. The sulfonate is now added with sodium hydroxide now to form sodium alkyl benzene sulfonate. And that is how to summarize preparation of surplus detergents in one line. You understand? Yes. 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 And to differentiate, Nini of surplus and soap, earlier, surplus is the ring and the saffronate. A surplus detergent, leather is the soap. Presentation okay. polymer that can be tested in case you see only two, Trilene and nylon. I want to go each of them in the next six minutes each, so that we now break to go and take our set of. Now. We have condensation polymer, the only ones that are tested there. We have the natural polymer, say so. We have uh, wood, we have uh, proteins, we have starch, we have cellulose. Those ones, they are just going to be taught to mission. And by the in a starch, we have cellulose, we have siso. Yes. yes. They are names. So the only condensation polymer you're going to be tested is only starch, not starch, but only nylon 66. So let me take you through them. These are made out of condensation polymerization, which occurs when monomers having at least two or more reactive functional groups at each other combine to form a single large molecule with the elimination of a simple molecule like water, ammonia, or HCl. So the only polymers, the major group of condensation polymers are the polyamides and the polyester. Polyamide is whereby we have nylon six and the poly where we have So let's go through. Formation of nylon six, which is a polyamide. Listen very carefully. So nylon six, first of all, it is called nylon six because it is made up of 
two monomers, each monomer containing six carbon atoms. That's why it's called nylon tape. Bend up of two monomers, each monomer contains six carbon atoms, and the name was derived from by the fact that the two monomers that made, make nylon, one was discovered in, in New York, and the other one was discovered in, in London, hence the name nylon. What are the two monomers? So nylon belongs to the uh, polyhamide condensation polymer because it's a hamine group formed when a dioic acid reacts with the, the anorganic dihamine. Each of the monomers has two reactive functional groups at each end. So we have the functional group of amine, the EO amine, and I could have the carboxylic group, which is the carboxylic. So let's look at the, 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 the look at this. In the tonight, exon one six diamine, in the one exon one six diamine, do he, which is now compressed like this. Then we have exon one six dioic acid, which is summarized like this. I'll advise you as much as possible, if possible, to simply, to simply write the open structures of these things. So normally, we can be in the So in the carbon, you know, when now you just let me show you how we arrive at these names. Diamine means it has two amine group. Where are they located? One of on the first and the other one the sixth. Ugenza one, two, three, four, five, six. Utapata kuna, this we can say this carbon one. If the first carbon and kuna amine group, and the sixth kuna amine. That's why we have the name exon one six diamine. Melevana student, eh? Yes. Yes. Dioic acid. When I count to one, at one the carbon one, two, three, four, five, six. Ikona two carboxyl group. Moja ikoka the first carbon atom. Na yu ingine ikoka six carbon atom. Ifo two. Just know for nylon six six. Una exan one six diamine. Moja kutakuwa na amine group kwa the two, the, 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 the extreme ends. And the other one will have carboxyl group on the six extreme ends. During polymerization, the acid gives the OH that you're going to see, while the amine will give the hydrogen. Moja in a pen hydrogen is side, na hydrogen is side. Hapa kuna kabogdil group, it apena OH is side, na OH is side. Let us see. During polymerization, the OH comes from the dioic acid. Many students don't know that, that the, o, the carboxyl group gives the OH. So while the, the hydrogen comes from the diamine. Let's look at this. So he, so he, it's a piano, let's see. So you can hydrogen, so this hydrogen from the amine, hydrogen from the amine so this hydrogen from the amine combines the OH from this in a form much. But do not do nimbili nimbili. So the other one will also do the same. So the other hydrogen will also combine with this one to form water. So normally we have two modes of water lost wherever there are two, two monomers combined. And now, if you share two hydrogen, hydrogen upper, the remaining components combine. The monomers realign themselves. And then you get your, your polymer. Are you following? Yeah. Yes. Our mind in a draw hydrogen. in a bucket free. in a draw. Na hii ingine atuwa OH, OH on both sides. Then the combining things, sita na mwisho tu. Hivo tu. Then you get your nylon 6X. It's not magic. It is simply chemistry. That is simply, let's see. That's it. Then finally, unaeka bracket na unaeka N. Hivo. So this is the point here. Hapa, hydrogen, hii hydrogen na hii OH in a form match. Hii hydrogen na hii in a form water. Then now the combining uh, element. Now when they have like that, they are free ants. They can continue combining, combining. Then now you are going to have your compound. Then we have this one. And that's now the formula of nylon 6-6. Six, six. Sawa? Yes. Can I show you for terilin? Yes. And then we yes. call it a... Terilin now, do you hear? Terilin is the simplest. We have... For terilin, we have uh, 
uh, is a polyester because it uses uh, it uses an acid and an alcohol that is now esterification that we call it an es a, 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 a polyester of course the this is what really happens we are going to have a than one two dial you hear in it than one two dial because above we're gonna you're gonna two age group one on the first and the other one on the second then we have going to have the benzene benzene one four dioic acid i think somebody will be asked why do we call it benzene one four dioic acid it is a dioic means it has two carboxyl group let's count one two three four five six now bado one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and six so in that kind of a scenario we have a carbox the group here equal which carbon atom students this one is one. occurring one and the other one occurs in which carbon atom four are we together yes peer to get sub one two three but to tabaki carboxyl group ya kwanza iko kwa first you get it kwa four so depending on where you start counting from that's why the name becomes basin one four dioic dioic two carboxyl group where they located one of the first carbon atom the one of the fourth carbon atom and attached to a benzene so that's why we have benzene one four dioic acid so the acid again will always give the oh oh and the alcohol will give the what the hydrogen let that one sink the alcohol gives h alkanoic acid will always give you the oh let's get other upon your what wengi am mnaifanya vibaya the oh is from the dioic acid and h from the dio so dio hiyo vile ilienda tu the other one from there maji ingine then combining elements inateremka dio hizi you just pick this one vile iko unaiteremsha hapa na unachukua hii ingine vile iko unaiteremsha hapa na zina link and you have now your terrelin does it look simple Yes. Oh, true. But I do a benzoic acid in a tank one in one four dioic. At least now you know. Even if you reach to the exam now, sir, you have to go to a benzene, a hexagon. So I took it in a car. Yes, sir. Sorry. Benzene. So I took a magic hexagon. He was saying he was. If you watch a story, mingi. Isao inaitanga benzene 1 for amani benzene 5 unaanza kuhesabu 1 2 3 4 then ukumbuke 1 and 4 so that is called benzene 1 for dioic ah you see now when you know those things like that you can even remember it in an exam if it gets you forget whether it is benzene 1 for one or benzene 1 2 does it make you is it to to remember isn't it yes yes see student and uh, yes now that the monomers align themselves and you are able to get now finally the formula of terylene that's the formula of terylene so many students will not will do wrong things eh hapa ndio shida inakuanga many students think alcohol in a penanga hoh so ukifanya hivyo you will not get the formula of that juu sasa ukiweka hivi you are you are cobalt itaanza na itaanzia hapa which is wrong so you have to measure that just know that for mm -hmm. the two elements, the oh come from the alkanoic acid the other component whether it's a diamine or rather it's a dio will give you the h and that is how you get the formula of terylene and i think now i have i have demystified those concepts in a manner that is more easier for you i thank you so much for attending the lesson uh, possibly i'll be sending the link again via your teacher so that you can be able to uh, we can be able to look at that uh, topic of uh, i don't know the poll whether they are still there but uh, i can see most of you you said electrochem otherwise uh, continue following up and i think you can uh, write your appreciation in the in the comment section 
whatever you want us to get, or rather maybe you also appreciate uh, what you have learned today. Otherwise, somebody with a question, uh, that's come to the end of our lesson today, and I think it was very useful to most of you. Thank you so much, sir, for the lesson. God bless you. We're looking forward to the next one. Thank you. I'm, I'm trying Mr. to... Mr. Mbaluka, Mr. Mbaluka, before you go. Hello? Mbaluka? Yes. Yes, you are online. You are online. Continue. Um, uh, we really appreciate. Uh, some of us are teachers, others um students, and uh, indeed you are rich. You are rich in 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 chemistry content. Would you just advise some of us how you have arrived to that? What as a student you should do so that you can at least because I've seen some student doing rote learning. They are just, you just uh, teach them simple uh, uh, concept. They are just there. What can you tell to uh, such students? Can you introduce yourself first and possibly where you're, you're falling from and uh, where you teach? Okay, um, I'm Richard Ntombura from uh, Bishop Jiro Girls, Kangeta, Meru. Kangeta. Okay, uh, we... I've been I've been following you from 2020 because I've seen that indeed you are you are helping so many, including teachers, and I would like to be rich in content as you. Thank you. Were you, were you did you attend the session yesterday? Yes, I did. Yeah, because I I think I explained that first of all, Kasema, uh, first of all, the student have to read. You have to read. The content master, yeah, master of content. Read not fast. When you now yeah. do the, the, the note, after now you have done the, the normal, the crude, the crude note, using a book with over 100 pages for a particular topic, then now you go and simply not. Yes. And I gave an example, a physical example, whereby I had to summarize note for a particular topic in one page. Yes. So, first of all, you have to, um, you have to read content, first of all, much content as possible. Then from there, you distill. The distilling involves now the summarizing the content. That's now for a student who's ready. Okay. Hello? The methodology of revision, uh, the one Hello? that today, we took organic. And yes. we have everything. You can imagine, we have tackled the entire organic up to polymerization, up to sure. so much. And we have done it in, in, less than, in less than two hours. That's the topic that takes... That's the organic one, and that's a topic that takes about 60 lessons. But now that's the octopus, because now we are reviving. You cannot revive if you have not read the topic. Sure. Number two, the kids need to read a lot, because I know, like you see, some of them are, are, are not even here. We started with 300, I can say, in my YouTube channel, more than 400 students are still falling there. But the most important yeah. thing is you need to, to, to have appetite for knowledge. True. And People free. By the time I was doing KCSE, uh, when I was a student, I was very sure even I could even have defeated my teacher. Like, I think I, <laughs> I was sure that even if we sit in the same table, he, uh, I can even flow my teacher. That is the student that I want. Like, you should be even be having the confidence that now you are almost the same level with the teacher. Sure. You are. Higher, you are top notch, you know. You are the, you know, that's why I call myself an ocean of chemistry. When you even go to Sangani Girls, I was in a mixed school, and you go to the magazine of 2001, you'll find uh, Mr. Baluka being described as the chemistry wizard. You know, he, he, they knew like right from form one, and it is something that the students just need to read. I've read so many, you know, I've synchronized. You. And you see, I've reached up, I even know where the confusion you'd see. Like, I know. You can see most of the things that we have tackled today, a student had issues with them. So Teacher. thank you. Continue uh, following. Mr. Karani, are you around? Man. Wilfred. Teacher. Uh, uh, yeah. When will you be hosting the next lesson? Possibly tomorrow. I'll, I'll be able to send a... Uh, can I... Please follow... <laughs> I'll, I'll be able to... I, after it, Follow my Twitter handle in a, in a, because students I cannot give you my my number. Go to direct. Although I gave a number yesterday, there's also another number that I gave that you cannot reach. You can still reach me for purposes of if you don't know if you don't get the the link. Of course, I think I gave my number yesterday. Uh, zero seven two zero seven two eight nine five one three twenty. 
0728951320. The, the parent can reach me. In case you will not get a link before that time, just inbox me. I'll also post the link in yeah. my YouTube. Teacher. Post the link. Teacher? Yes. Teacher? Yes. Uh, the meeting will start at what time? Nine, the same way it started today, or? Still trying to see whether I'm, I'm going to come here on nine or maybe at night. I may be trying to do it in the evening. Oh, today at night? Uh, in the evening or the, 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 in the morning. Okay, thank you, sir. I'm saying, which one do you prefer? The time? Morning. Morning, okay, sir. At your, at, at your convenience, uh, Mr. Mbaluka, we, we are there. I'll try to see what I can do, but remember everything. We are going to break it in several areas. So Tomorrow. That can... Yeah. Uh, Tomorrow. In the evening, it's also convenient. If you are available in the evening, it's so okay cute also. Okay, good. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you, thank too. You. Same. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Next time. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Looking forward to the thank next lesson. As I understand, you are very Thank you. 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 Thank you.